everybody and welcome to another instance of Boston Blue Beat Online Burst Limit. Here we are having our weekly Rambat series to determine who is going to get a free ticket to our regional Boston Blue Beat Beach episode campout, folks. So just keep that in mind. Again, you know, these this is part of our weekly series here on Mondays at 8 p.m. for the Blaze Blue side of things. Uh, and we will soon be joined by my co-commentator, Ben Pye. Uh, and yeah, just to let you guys know, we got a pretty big bracket coming on here today. Uh, we've got some big names like Fazama and Monarch that are coming here today. Mind you, those two and Zen as well. I think all three of them were at Frosty Faustings literally yesterday. Um, so you guys are insane for uh, pulling up for that again. Right. I think that is that is some that, that is some craziness. I don't know how y'all do it, um, but always glad to see you guys come out for these brackets. And I think we'll have a pretty good time over here. Uh, and I don't have our first set coming on here today. Let me just double check uh, and see what's uh, going on here for y'all. But, um, you know, let us know how you guys are doing today and uh, if you guys are hype. Uh, additionally, I just kind of want to run y'all through. Um, throughout this week, we have a ton of other weeklies as well. So we will, you know, again, have our plus our bracket. That'll be tomorrow at 8 p.m. And we will also have our under night two bracket. That's going to be uh, on Wednesday as well. Same time, same place. So if you guys want to get, uh, I know a lot of Blaze Blue folks want to try out the new game. So I think it'll be a great time to kind of get in, get some practice in. And, you know, if you guys are seasoned at it and get a chance to, you know, come chill with us over at Camp Out. So by all means, I think it'll be a very, very fun time. And if I double check here, I believe we have our first round is going to be Richter versus Extreme Sonic. So this will be Bang versus uh, Nine. I, unless Richter plays Noel, I don't expect Richter to play Noel, but sometimes he pick, he uh, picks up the character. So we'll have to wait and see for character select again. I, I don't trust I don't trust anybody with like until I see the character locked. Okay, we got Bang. Okay, great. And we have the nine that is going to be locking in here as well. Yes, no, maybe so. Okay, there it is. Oh my goodness. So I frankly don't see this matchup as much. Um, you don't see as much. The only bangs you really typically see are like Kobe and Greek, at least in terms of like the offline stage of things. And not a lot of nines are usually on stream, surprisingly, given the uh, character strength. Yeah. So we'll see what we get coming up over here today. The wheel of fate is turning. Level one. Right now, just kind of chilling out in neutral here. A couple of quick interactions, however. Going to back off, trying to look for another hit here. And right now, you can see that Richter is just kind of itching for a chance to get in. I, I played this guy recently. Richter's got some new mix. I, had, I got left righted. I got hit. We It was a slugfest. It was a crazy time. 5 D's going to connect here. First comes out from Sonic. So does the Amethyst. Oh, that was actually really interesting there. So, using the God Hand, which ended up beating the 2D, I think, uh, right before Richter had the chance to even guard point it, guard point the Amethyst here. And Richter, however, managing to go into the command grab afterwards and taking the first round of the set here. We're moving into this next round here, and so far, again, it's been that kind of like patient neutral. Just chilling out for a little bit as we figure out what is the kind of like better decision here. You can see Richter trying to use nails to kind of prod their way in here. Already at eight nails, which is getting a little low, but this should be a couple of seals here. Just the one Tr combo ends up dropping, 5C ends up getting mashed on, and it is party time for nine. Freeze here, probably going to be standard Oki. Doesn't get the knockdown, however. Same side, that teleport is really tricky. If nine is close enough to the corner, it will swap sides here. Combo ends, Rock is blocked, let's see what we get. RC after the God Hand, all blocked, but the 3C from Richter is stuffed by Extreme Sonic, backs off for the 4A here. And I believe this is one touch from Death here. 6D ends up rocking, and it could very well be party time with a 2D on the DP from 9. OD's available for Richter, you could easily see a round end in a crazy way here. Astral's available. I don't think Richter's going to go for it. He's not usually that nutty. Really looking for a positioning to get that hit here. Looking real nice. Super ends up connecting, and at most, is going to be RC into another hit, but not even... 
Uh, am I, uh, can I, uh... Yeah, yeah, you're on. What's up? Oh, here? Okay. <laughs> I was, I was just letting you think there for a second. Alright, I'm, uh, I'm officially here, I guess. <laughs> Sorry for missing the entire opening, uh, and all that. Things come up, no worries. But yeah, we got Richter, who is playing against Extreme Sonic, and it's, it's Richter on bang. This dude's a nutcase. I love watching him play. Extreme Sonic, yeah. And, uh, I, I kind of... I was a bit out of reach for, uh, up right now. Uh, Richter is currently up one game right here. Uh, they, pretty much the way that that first game went, a lot of kind of like patient neutral for a bit, but the moment either of them got in, kind of a bloodbath. Yeah. Just step out of the corner right there. Jesus. Yeah, unfortunate combo drop. There goes the 3C. Richter's a big fan of doing 3C in neutral, so you have to be very mindful of that. I think if Extreme Sonic, uh, honestly, he could probably just afford to jump around when at full speed. Because the nails aren't going to do much. Yeah. Nice drop with the step there that's going to avoid the 2D in this situation here. Not quite going to kill with Super, I think, even with the active flow. 9's damage is pretty abysmal without overdrive. Even then, with OD, it's not like crazy numbers, but, you know, it usually breaches 4K more often. Oh Burst bait right there. I have no idea if that was actually a, um, I don't know if he can technically option select there. I think the hit stun is big enough that he can just kind of check for what you do and then hit another button after. Damn. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't, I can't. Sometimes I'm like, maybe, like, Bang is really cool, but then I look at the way that sometimes you got a pilot around him, I'm like, you gotta be a nutcase, man. I'm not built like it. Oh my god. Doesn't land the second J4B. Might have been a, maybe a Croatian thing. Either way, Richter playing through the neutral quite well. Gonna land probably the last hit of the set if he doesn't drop this. Oh my god. I cursed him. Oh no, this OD's not it! No! The 2D and the 2D. Oh boy. Oh. One, one thing you really want to be mindful of when you're dealing with Bang is that because Explosion is already mad plus, if you're trying to OD raid through it, you're not really going to get much if you guard cancel that. You're better off waiting for another mix-up option coming up or, or something else of that nature. You're going to end up being pretty minus. And a lot of Bang players really, really, at least the Bang players that I have seen, really, really will thirst for your reversal options by using 2D. They'll look at you and be like, yeah, you want an EA here, yeah? And then 2D you, and then you feel very bad. I'm saying this because that happened to me a lot. So maybe it's just me. But in general, you really want to be mindful of how a bang is using drives in most states of the game. Yeah. But, uh, like a pretty big, uh, like, a little harder to use, but a prominent defensive tool you probably have to deal with while fighting any bang. Um, that whole like, the RPS of which drive, when, and uh, which follow-ups they go for, because he, he's got a couple options off of it too, or off of them too. Yeah, dealing with the shadow step is a pain in the ass sometimes, depending on, depending on the character. Sometimes, at least from playing Naoto, sometimes you just do a block string and you happen to just like hit a 2B and then it like auto corrects for bang and then he gets hit anyway and you're like, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> I um, meant to do that. Yeah, that, that is how I feel. And then if, when I hit confirm, I'm like, damn, I'm nice. When I don't, I'm like, oh, it's bang, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, just in general, it is the, it can be tricky uh, to deal with here. Right now we have a, another set coming on here. So this is going to be wario cucked me aka <laughs> wario's oh you guys are interested uh versus it's matt uh qsg uh matt who had gotten a top 16 finished at frosty's just this weekend ago just, just was watching him on the uh the stream 
Yeah, I think he... I can't remember exactly if he got ninth or, like, 13th, but uh, up-and-coming Naoto player, and he's certainly uh, part of the new blood. We had a lot of people in uh, our brackets here. Yeah, I think we end up getting, like, a, a decent amount of new folks in. And uh, some folks that you'd never... How can I do 4.6? Jesus Christ! I don't know what the starter was, but I guess it was, it was the right starter. Five, it was a 5C counter hit. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, you're gonna eat a lot of damage. And, uh... If there's any character you actually really don't want to eat a huge counter hit from, it's, like, Valkenhayn. Part of the way he's balanced is that... You, Though he can, like, left-right you like crazy, or rather high-low you like crazy, it's really the fact that he has to do it, like, seven times. And when you reduce the amount of touches he needs, uh, it's not a fun time. All right now, both players scrambling about in neutral a bit. Matt finding a couple of solid block strings here. Whoa! Really good wolf movement from Wario there. That combo's not going to be able to kill. Unfortunate drop on the uh, 2 3 6 B, but finding an air throw is wolf, okay. Right. Letting that walk speed do all the work there. I'm serious, when I would play against Barlow like years ago, I wasn't good at the game, but I'd watch this dude walk back and forth as wolf and I'd be like, huh. <laughs> He's just not there anymore, and like doesn't even need the block. Not that he can anyway. Tagged by the JC here in this situation, but Wario still not in, not in a too bad of a situation. However, Right as I say that, this is likely death here, depending on the confirm. Jesus, yeah, Smash was enough to do it. Yeah, that was kind of a, that was kind of a quick round, man. I'm not gonna lie, he got lit up. Oh, finally gonna stuff the approach from that here. And Mario doing a good job of mixing some of the wolf movement here, but really eager on the kind of like the drive movement, and that drains a lot of the wolf gauge. So. I'm curious to see if that'll end up uh, going outside of Wario's favor. He'll have to kind of manage the resources a little more tightly, but thus far hasn't been a crazy problem for him. Rolls out of the corner just fine. Dodging around in neutral here. Wolf Gage is looking a bit low. Even after just one mix-up, yeah, they're forced to go for the throw in that situation just to recover more of the Wolf Gage. One more hit to get it done. However, OD comes oh up, God. throw from Matt. Nope. Goes into Smasher. Oh, God, no. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. That was... That was dangerous. I don't know why he... I, I, I feel like he could have been kept... It, I, like, he tried to keep it simple, but... It ended up getting way. overcomplicated anyway, yeah. yeah. So just from that situation, uh, if I remember correctly, yeah, as now to you can do like throw 2C 5D and then Sway Dash Astral. Uh, or you can do mo like, or actually to keep it even simpler, you can just do 5AA Astral. Now to Astral combos off of like almost basically all of his normals. It's kind of insane. Uh, but you could also do like throw OD into stuff. I conveniently speaking labbed that like not too long ago. So I'm a particular nerd for like that sort of thing. But uh, that aside, sometimes that's kind of like the curse of Naoto, where you're like, okay, I'll do a simple thing, but you only remember like a standard B&B. &B. Dude, uh, tr uh, trust me, take it from an overcomplicator, and that is, that is real. Okay, a little low on Wolf, so... I definitely try to stick to Human a bit more, but he needs to like, you know, a lot of guys need to go way more effective than Wolf. So. Yeah, and we've seen cases where like Wario opts to go for a wolf throw more frequently just to get that wolf gauge back. And so I think if Matt is a little more on point with some of those timings and maybe pops in a couple of OS's, like he'll find a lot of success kind of stalling out the wolf gauge. Ooh, I don't think that smasher was intentional. I, I can't tell. If, I don't know if he was expecting it to be in the air, at the very least. That's true. Oh god, went for a double overhead over there. I would have immediately crashed block and gotten hit by that, oh. I'm not gonna lie. Good blocks, but a, a, like the whiff jump in there into throw. Level two. That off yeah. Guard. Wario's using a lot, a lot of wolf movement. Uh, and while, in theory, that could definitely be curved to, like, better handle the gauge, I think Matt is just feeling way more unfamiliar in those situations, and so that kind of results in him still getting hit. Woo! This combo is sick! God, I love not routing. This character is so cool, dude. 
5 AA. Just some good pressure here. But the barrier from Wario is going to push Matt out a little too far. The 5 beat doesn't even connect. Bro does, however, and that's going to be plenty of corner here. Ooh, Micro Dash 2C as well. Okay, okay. Uh, he can jump low, gets the burst out. This is great for Matt here. Ooh, nice tech there on the throw. That greatly changes how Wario has to play out this situation. He has to stay in human for a little bit just to get that Wolf Gauge back. I don't think Matt is necessarily recognizing that he has the advantage in those situations. So Wario gets to recover a lot of gauge, kind of for free almost. Yeah, very hesitant to approach. Uh, I don't know if he just doesn't really realize resources like that, or if he's just not sure how he wants to approach even human Valve. Because I know human Valve, he's still got some pretty nice buttons, but uh, much more limited characters than he's been doing. Oh my god. That 214 BRC was actually really slick. Because on top of giving you a combo in that situation, because due to the height, you ordinarily can't combo off the J214 B there. But the RC lets Valk fall down and go for more successive buttons, as well as check for the burst. So that was really cool there. Yeah, I yeah. I just want to wanna highlight that. Very, very good awareness there. But yeah, to, to kind of pick up what you were mentioning, there's a, there's a, it's notable in the ways that which Matt is not too sure on how to approach and Wario kind of gets to chill in neutral a lot more calmly than what otherwise could have happened. Oh goodness, Wolf Break JA connecting here in this situation. It feels like Wario's just getting started. 6B now, it's going to be a decent amount of Wolf recovery. Combo drops, but Wario stays in. Trying to spend a lot of that wolf gauge in order to get something generated here. It's not going to work out super well. Matt mounting their offense now. Oh my god, that 2 3 6 barely connected on the opposite side, mind you. I mean, I don't think that was the interaction he was expecting, but he definitely made the most of it. It's always the people that confirm the weird stuff that scare me. Because I'm like, okay, cool, like, you didn't intend to do this, like, whatever, like, you're not doing all this nutty stuff. And then they're like, oh, but I know, I kind of have an idea what to confirm is. That's when I'm like, you're insane. Yeah, but I can make it up on the spot. Like, oh, yeah. You're like, oh, huh, that I see. You're that guy? And I'm like, okay. Dude, like, I'll... There's so many people I'll play and they'll just make up stuff on the fly. And I'm like, okay, you're cracked. You're just better. <laughs> Looking for something from Wario, but honestly, Wario thus far has been reliant on a lot of CA and just fuzzy jumps to get out of situations. So I don't think Matt necessarily needs to worry about that as they take this, uh, as they go into last game, last round here. It's a matter of uh, using Naruto's tools to maybe shut down some of those escape options and try to uh, incentivize a mash and then uh, stagger accordingly. Yep. Alright, solid confirm here as well. All it takes at this point is genuinely just one good hit with OD and then Wario is dead. Oh god. Just a little too far there. Very unfortunate. Not in a bad position though. Oh, a lot of light that we're looking at. The burn through, 6 b go for the whole 5 c That was a lot of actions being done, I'm not gonna lie to you. However, yeah. 6A right there connecting, and that will get Matt the win right there in what was getting pretty dicey based on that first round of game two. Oof. All right, that has been a blistering set of round one matches. We've got a couple of interesting matches coming up for you guys right now. Uh, currently, we are going to have Dawn and Jetstorm come up here. And oh my god, I hate this. Right. Jetstorm has come up for several sets, but I always forget who they play. I'll remember it at some point. Uh, Ragnar Avatar that doesn't really mean much, honestly. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, and then Dawn, we're going to see here on the Relius. Oh man. 
I was gonna play them recently, and then I didn't. Well, he fell asleep. It's all good. Anyway, uh, but Dawn, as we've seen from prior burst limits, as well as just kind of in general in the online scene, a pretty solid Relius Clover right here. And so I don't expect any kind of character swaps or, or changes on that end. Yeah, looks like Dark is just a Robin, tried and true. Yep, yep, yep. So this should be pretty neat here. Ragna Relius, I can't speak on it necessarily as an expert, but uh, as far as I understand, there are a lot of ways in which Ragna can challenge Relius in neutral, as long as he's proper and careful enough with it. Um, one thing that I always like to talk about with, with this matchup is the fact that Ragna and Relius' 5Bs are like scarily similar. Yeah. Like... To the point where like they have ex they have like the same startup active and like recovery frames. Hitbox interacting with them, but their their five Bs are both very similar. Oh my god. I was thinking this match with something is actually uh normally pretty good at checking the doll. Oh my god. Oh my Jesus, that is that was that is aggression. Ooh. Oh baiting the CA as well. Sheesh. He was ready for that. I'm saying. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. That was a very surprising round start. The 5A from Jetstorm makes sense there. Uh, surprised by Dawn going for the super jump in the summon. Most of the time when you see releases, they might just do like I do back in the summon. But, like, doing a bit more there. Unfortunately, not finishing up the confirm. The twirl ends up getting beaten out in the recovery frames here. This is looking pretty solid for Jetstorm, but still have a bit of a health disparity to make up for. Each Aerthor, however, is going to catch out Jetstorm, and that's going to be a free summon for Dawn. Oh my god. And we gotta. You know what? Sometimes, why play neutral when I have Hellsfang? That is the real question to ask here. 6B connects and gets a whole burst out of Dawn. That is awesome if you are Jetstorm. This burst here is dangerous, however. This is, uh. Oh my goodness. Counter Assault 2D. Relly's had to block the whole normal for this. Yeah, let's do a bios time. Got it, yeah. I think, with the DP clash, but to no avail. Yeah, it's, I think, extremely tempting for. It's extremely tempting to try to do like one of those Twitter clips where you DP clash with Relius the entire time on dual bios, but most of the time it's not gonna work out. <laughs> to earn for a connecting here in this situation now, Dawn gets to start their pressure with a couple of normals with the 6D. Has to D someone just to get the gauge back. Great recognition on the counter hit there from Jetstorm. Not only that, but realizing that you can 5A afterwards to pick up. Really good stuff there. Yeah, you want to be really mindful with 6Ds. Most of the time, you just want to, like, IDB and push him away. Uh, but it could get a little frisky here. Oh, God. A lot of overheads coming out. <laughs> We're doing stuff, man. Counter Assault comes out from Jetstorm. 6A whiffs. One for C's going to lock down Jetstorm. Oh, wow, that's an unfortunate thing. Oh, God. Twirl the burst, but it is actually dead. This is really risky. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Just turn around Blood Sight. Air Blood Sight. Could have definitely killed off of the Nightmare Edge, but I don't think that they realize the situation since everything happened so fast. 
So right now it is 1-0 Jetstorm here in this situation. 5A checkout round start once again. Dawn trying to navigate their way in neutral. Ignis gets killed rather quickly. Oh, okay. And if I, if, for those watching, Dawn doing that 2C in that situation is a bit telling. Uh, sometimes it can be difficult to tell if a person is reacting or doing something preemptively, and that's where patient play really comes in handy. Because you can, if you just watch a person's, like, uh, just move about in neutral, they're kind of doing, like, committal moves like Relius 2C. That tells you that they're looking for, like, IAD for Ragna, and you can dash up with, like, a 2D or something to catch them to slip. Yeah, you really want to be, if you see Relly's kind of jump up like that to go for a J2D, you can honestly just air to air him. Like, jumping up with a JA is fine. Getting your burst baited is not fine, however. Yeah, another one. Taking some chat, taking by the coral. Spun and sashayed away, and that is round one for Dawn here in this situation. 5B stuffs the 5C here. Not going to be a ton of damage, gets a quick Gadlin's loop. This is going to lead to a solid knockdown here. And Dawn's probably going to de-summon an Ignis. Yeah, there it is right there. Thought he was going to do it after the knockdown, but A-OK -okay here. A couple of 60s coming out, and you got to remember, whatever the hell Ragna wants to do after 60, it's going to be plus. Uh, whether he whiffs it or the JD connects, both situations are plus. So you really don't want to mash in that immediate situation there. 6B connects, but no follow-up from uh, Jetstorm in this situation. I'm... Kind of surprised, but you can make a roll out of this. Oh god, tries to DP, and you are going to eat a counter for your troubles. Honestly, that is bad for uh, this. <laughs> but, yeah. He's back in the gold with me. Okay. Oh my god. Don't twirl. Tried to boss walk on him with the throw. Oh my god, TK Blood Tides. You're a madman. 2 1 4 just barely catching Ragnar's extended hurt box. If there's yeah. a normal you don't want to play around with, it's that. If, if Ignis is getting sent out, just leave. If you want to, throw out a disjoint if you think you're that person. But I'm going to tell you right now, most of the time, you're not. <laughs> yeah, probably trying to put out an air normal to get the doll off the screen, but the wheel still active, so <laughs> got clipped Level by it instead. One. Yeah. Action. It looks like instant block. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Full screen run into, by the way, I'm doing another Hell's Fang. Burst oh. is baited. Yeah, you can't you can't burst on 2C. Because if that normal counter hits you, Relius is already going to do 2C jump barrier 2C. So that will auto check for bursts as well as still lead into a full combo. RC right there for the regen route. This is going to be a full Ignis gauge for Dawn. Oh, it didn't even go for the J2 and 4B. Ooh, CA ends up connecting. 5B stuffing the dash up. Just mashed on the uh, rear perk there. 2C is like plus one, but I mean, you know, you, they still got a... It's not a guaranteed frame trap, but they something back on. Okay, yeah. Not the 2C there, the punishing 2C there, which is the uh, stall on Nightmare Edge. Here. Jumps out. DP connects with 2 and 4A. Wow. Hard knockdown with the 6A. Time to guess. Proper guard right there on the low here. Guess once more. Ooh, oh, you did not know. Yeah. In some situations, you can fuzzy guard like the 2B versus late air dash mix, but it can be a bit of a pain to uh, get the timing down. Oh, looking for the burst right there from Kong. Oh, he's bearing. He's looking for burst. EA comes out here. Throw right there. We'll get it done. Yeah, no need to do too much. Just click all of two buttons. <laughs> and it's all over. Good set to check out there. And now we have another local player coming up here. This is going to be Kaisuke versus Fazama. I, in the past, got it uh, wrong on where Kaisuke was at, but they are a low player in Massachusetts that plays Jin. It's always a pleasure to watch them play. And up against them is going to be, uh, if I remember correctly, I think Fazama top-aided uh, for Frosty Faustings here. 
Uh, let me double check to make he... sure that I'm not telling lies. No, he was right outside of top eight. He lost to Uri in losers. That's what it was. Oh my yeah. goodness. Right. Because I like the match that would have qualified. Or... Yeah, I think that was a top eight like qualifying top eight. match. Yeah, I remember now. I remember now. I remember now. But yeah, this should be Jin versus Hazama. Uh, not a matchup that Hazama is exactly ecstatic about. Jin's got a lot of ways to cover spacings at different ranges, and he always has the threat of something like jump for JB as well as you know JC and some normals like 2A and 2B to kind of check Hazama's movement in those situations. Now, Fazama likes to play very actively. They they really like to move around the screen a, a ton. So it might be a bit more difficult for Kaisuke to pin them down. But if Kaisuke is patient enough and kind of baits out some more of those chains, it could look difficult for Fuzz here. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't see Kaisuke too much. So I actually don't know how... Familiar he is with like familiar he is with like what characters? Yeah, like he'll pop up every now and then for a bracket, both online and offline. Um, but it can be kind of hard to tell what we're gonna see coming up here. So I'm curious to ask to see what their experience with Hazama is. I know that Hazamas are everywhere on netplay. There's snakes everywhere. It's like yeah, a, it's he, like a he's garden. Playing, he he he's probably should be a master this uh this matchup. Although. <laughs> Fuzz being no slouch, so it's gonna have to prove it uh, in this match. Mm -hmm. What's he doing? He ain't about to pull out anything. Yeah, you know that. I mean, come on now. What are we doing? All right, now let's see. Did you just put $100 in? Hey. Oh my goodness, Shout I swear. BGF. You got like top eight money and you just spent that and more on this. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Now we got even more cash at stake here. Jeez. Let's see what the round star interactions looking like. Okay. Nothing too unusual here, but let's see what Kaisuke has on defense to say. Clip by the stance normals in this situation. Back dashes, 623D call out works out for Fuzz. Two for B blocked once again. I'm not really sure what Fuzz is necessarily looking for. Getting the kind of hit there, backing off, maybe trying to bait a defensive option perhaps. I was off of 5A and I too, so. Yeah, Fuzz is. If there's anything that Fuzz almost always has, it's like the nastiest confirms off of the weirdest hits. Like, he will always get his damage done. And sometimes you throw him a little style, too. Oh, for sure. Kaisuke getting the throw here in this situation, however. Going to be a standard knockdown, it looks like. Gets to dash up and pressure. 2C does not connect. Probably looking for an IAD or trying to catch Fazama trying to chain out there. Fuzz still managing to move out with their ground game in this situation. Gonna get another knockdown, even putting Kaisuke in the corner, matter of fact. Chains in, JB connects, but nothing more. DDP, however, from Kaisuke here. Be a good knockdown. Let's see what we get. 6A. No meter to follow up with. And there's the 2C on the IDJ 2C. Wait, you're gonna kill him? Oh. oh. Wow. That is optimized damage. Wow. Active flip. First save like. That was nuts. I Popping Act of Flow right then and there by usage of the OD as well as the Crush Trigger, which really cranks up the Act of Flow gauge as well as adding damage. Really, really good routing from Fuzz. I am genuinely surprised that he got the kill. Wow, oh my God, that was <laughs> a huge call out on the round play. Oh, double six a <laughs> catching the roll. 
All right, safe jumps here. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> danger jump, danger jump, danger jump. Danger jump, <laughs> danger jump. Oh, man. Normally, and normally that works too. You do the 2B, 5B, 1 hit in the 2-2-C, and you can, um, you can catch, like, DPs with that. I... I wonder if Fuzz was maybe just a little too, like, little too low to the ground, or if Kaisuke just messed up the, like, J2C timing. Whoa! Oh, Five feet. They start a little cold snowflake. Uh, goes down a little bit here, letting Kaisuke get controlled. Oh, he might have been able to kill, actually, with 2 and 4D instead of 2, 3, 60. Oh, you're standing in the... No, you're getting your life stolen! No! Oh, my God. Too high. Oh, here I'm going. Oh, oh doesn't get under! You're dead! Be... Jesus, that was a lot. Okay. So yeah, Kaisuke going for the 236D there meant that he couldn't kill Fuzz. Although the 236D is a much safer special to end on, and you can still kill Fuzz. You got the you believe in like the, 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 the next part of the combo here. This one won't be attached by the uh, Yeah. Alright, Kaisuke, do like 36As. Trust me, it'll work. Not that! No! Oh, and the side swap air can bring you some fuzz, a little extra damage. Oh, oh, he's got all these chain ex- Oh my god. Alright, you can still 2A there. Oh, throw. No punish from fuzz at the very least, he jumped back. This is gonna be a mix-up. Oh goodness, getting lit up here. Don't think he's gonna go for a reset in this situation. Yes, he is! Blocked from Kaisuke. Yeah. Doesn't punish on the wolf I see, but... Got... Uh-oh, got fuzz in the corner, but not full so home. Oh my goodness. 6C? Yeah, you're not dead. Yeah. So 2C into the 2B there. Should be able to kill off of this. No! Maybe didn't believe in the height for the 2-2C there. That can be a little weird to buffer when you're falling to the ground at certain heights. Uh, but either way, that was close. <laughs> that, was, that was about to get very dicey. Oh my god. The counter hit the Zenimiga. Auto correcting. Buzz. Getting the full confirm here. Bring to the corner. On a game. Ooh, burst from Kaisuke there. And likely was meant to be a wake up OD. Alright, we're gonna get tagged a couple of times here. J2 and 4B Ender. And next hit certainly kills. Fuzz just waiting for some reversal option from Kaisuke here. Jesus. TK, Jamajin. Okay, a little scrambly at the end there, but Fuzz find the hit and on a perfect too. Sheesh. And that is going to be 2 0 for Fazama here. And we got another set coming up for you guys uh, right afterwards. This is going to be Matt versus Ryukasit, who uh, surprisingly wasn't at Frosty's. I. I honestly thought he was going to pull up for that. Usually you can expect Rikasim at most majors for Blaze Blue, but not in this situation here. Or not in that situation there. Either way, uh, I think this will be a pretty interesting set. This is going to be Naoto versus Hakuman. Have you seen, when was the last time you saw this matchup, Ben? Uh, Hakuman, Naoto. I'm not sure. Like, I, if, like both these characters pop up here and there, but I, it, I feel like it's been a minute since I've actually seen, like, the matchup. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I feel like Naoto, like, this isn't a terrible matchup for Naoto by, like, any means. Um, well, you, you kind of are currently playing Naoto. Have you had to, have you had to deal with this matchup? Um... The last time I played Hakuman Naoto, it was a Susan player that went Hakuman in the last like three games. <laughs> oh. um, I don't have much to say, much less um, any updates to Ryukism's play playstyle. I haven't played the guy in a while now that I think about it. It's kind of weird to think about. Uh, but no, I have not run into like any of the stronger Hakumans. I think the last time we saw this might have been... Did Matt play against CM Sora to add off Frosties? I don't remember seeing it, but I mean, I, I, you know, I could have just missed a match or two. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to search through the memory banks. We'll, we'll, we'll do some research maybe in between, uh, in between sets or something. We'll, uh, Either we'll way, get to, we'll get to see the matchup right now. Yeah, 
patient neutral right here, but this is going to benefit Ryukusen a lot. Oh, oh my god. And we're starting off explosive now. Mr. Micro Dash on the fine B. That's fine. How can anything kind of just get full screen in this matchup? You don't have to worry about anything and just get like clean move. Yeah, that's the big thing. As an Auto, you really don't want to send yourself flying. If you're running in with a lot of enhanced specials, I mean, Hawkman is just going to 2D you for most of your trouble. He has no overhead specials off that. And because he's in a crouching state from 2D, it's not like you can go for like super janky Phantom Pain from full screen or something like that. But Naoto 2B as well as 3C are still great normals to poke with. Because they're crouching normals, they will definitely get under uh, hopping in 4C in case he's poking with that. Yeah. Um, so he's got a couple of options to move around, and he can always IED, of course. And Naoto's air dash is pretty good. But uh, yeah, that being said, this round, that first round going quite heavily in favor of Ryukusen here. Dagger runs up. He just from top matching just a little late on the approach. Throw right there. I wonder if Matt was looking for a throw as we saw the barrier flash from, from Ryukusim, but Ryukusim is a pretty well known stand tacker, I would say, in this game at this point. He doesn't really option select for throws, so normally he will just commit to the TK Subaki or he will just throw when he feels that um, it is coming. Kind of like the first of the Matt, as you see, like Ryukusim. Uh, trying to get a little, or was getting a little scrambly neutral and like landing with like 2D, trying to hit the mat, wanting to punish something. Oh my god, no, big DQ with that he did not die for like, at all. Yeah, and in fact, he's about to kill Ryukas in here. Yeah, that was, and like, I feel like he could have still got something because he did dash in right as he was landing, but didn't believe or I don't know, wasn't comfortable. Mm. I, yeah, I'm not too sure. And it's it's not like, you know, we're saying Naoto needs to hold forward the entire time in the set, but it's like, it's the fact that Naoto is still is, uh, not really gaining much, while Ryukusim is just gaining full meter. Like, these, like, five seconds of not much happening in neutral are so pivotal for Ryukusim being able to either, one, like, explode you or two like it means that he can now use a couple of like extra specials in neutral that are not accessible normally like this is the difference between like a zontetsu or just a simple like two and four a yeah and especially you know when optimus has got the light there's even less reason for him to win the approach yeah like him. all he really wants to do is just kind of continue a bit if at most and then otherwise this man is just like happy to stay on the farm get getting some meter okay blue beat combo here in this situation od's in it right there into immediate 63 aa oh that was meant to be micro dash 2c tragedy for matt here yeah, and Matt, I think, was looking for the RC on the 6B to get the overhead coming out from there, but ended up getting, like, a micro-walk 5B. It's most unfortunate. Some taking the first game there. Um, honestly, not to, you know, not to say Ryukusim is, like, a super nut, but honestly, some of the most patient play I think I've seen from him <laughs> in this match. But I guess it makes sense, given the matchup. Yeah, I agree. He's just been chilling out in neutral. He's not really... He's not really even putting himself in situations where he wants to or has to gamble. He's just kind of like, if you're going to play this neutral slowly, like, I am A-OK -okay with this. We can, we can run this. 6A from Matt connects here. Unfortunate drop in that situation. Trying to reset pressure off the second hit Rekka, but it is quite unsafe. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Dude, I'm not gonna lie, as Naoto, I just whiff 5B like three times in a row, and then I hit it on the last one, and I get a counter hit on crouching hit. I'm like, wow, I'm nice. That 5D was sick, though. Woo! Alright, gonna get some good corner carry off of this. 
Let's see the upcoming situation. Just a couple of 5As here. The crush Sugar Connects. Next it kills. Matt really trying to be cognizant of Ryukasim's options right here on that OD. Not trying to play around with fire, but still getting counter hit in that situation here. Yeah, you're not dead, so that's like a successful I survived Hawkman's OD, but man, that's a lot of damage. I think Antier connects here. From the Phantom Pain, nice and easy into Super. Don't struggle with any of that uh, extra Nautilus like you keep doing. Wow. Oh my goodness. Going in straight for the juggler there. JD ends up connecting here. Oh, reverse hit JC, surprisingly. Yeah, weird hit there. But I guess just make space for Rikus and like, like there he is, just chilling again, waiting for the meter to come back. Oh, and so is Matt, and he's so willing to just use the spaced Kai to be like, alright, like, you want to give me a free counter hit, then by all means. Matt backing off a lot, but frankly, that's that 6D there was the one of, if not the very first grounded drive we've seen from Ryukasen all set. And while Dash got the enhanced record there for a lot of XD damage. Oh my god. Alright, if at first you get, I don't know, you get knocked away, try and try again. Yeah, Let's see. Um, he popped back to just in time for that to kill. Nice. Tech into immediate dash record. Dude, and he did it immediately. That looked <laughs> perfectly buffered. I saw no dash startup. It was all Rekka. I was like, oh, okay. Hit the ground running, like literally. Yes, violence. literally. I'm like, Jesus. We're queuing up in here again for the last game of this set, and this is still winner side, if I recall correctly, so we've got a little bit more time before uh, it's do or die. Yeah, neither player at uh, risk of being eliminated. Just sent him to a bit. Oh, actually, sorry. Matt is clarifying that Regison was there. Oh, you guys did play at Frosty. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize for that. I was wrong. That's on me. I had not realized. That is my that is my fault. Spreading misinformation. I'm just wrong. I hate that. I hate that feeling of just being wrong. Yeah, it's probably because I I did miss a bunch of that bracket actually on the stream, so I probably just didn't see him set. Whoa, DP! Oh my god! Crazy situations here. Oh my god! Five C counter hit. All right, this set is starting to get a little more and more into the slugfest uh, kind of style, but so far it hasn't been like insane, insane. I would say this is still pretty. Excuse me, this is still quite measured. Uh, I would say for both players here. Ooh, okay, a little short from getting like a like a, a knockdown. Oh, five B connecting here. Oh my goodness, yeah, you mispositioning. Yeah, mispositioning from Matt, still trying to you know, get their hit in, but at at certain points, you just gotta let it go. Sudden enhanced record to start their turn here in this situation. Reeveson getting a combo into 6B here. Solid knockdown, the 5B, the 5A into the 6B. Jeez, 623A just barely connecting here. Back to neutral, and it's one touch from death here for Matt. The 2B, not enough. Oh no, it's party time. <laughs> <laughs> What's he gonna do? He's air dashing in, just popped OD in the middle of the air. It's Hawkman, like... I don't know, That's that's a, that was a little scary. That was a little... I wouldn't have known what they've done there. I... Yeah, my mind would tell me no, but my, like, immediate instinct would be to hit Sway there, and I'm telling you right now, I would have gotten hit by something else. <laughs> like, right afterwards. <laughs> Uh, sometimes my brain guides me to make a very silly decision. <laughs> don't think I don't think I don't know the sway. It's the Nauto. It's whenever you're playing Nauto. That's what that's what actually is like taking control of you. It is. Even I get not... e uh, evil thoughts. Yes, it is. It is crazy. It does. It is. Uh, it gives me many many evil temptations there. 
Uh, anyway, just kind of as we were mentioning earlier in the chat, make sure to hit exclamation point Macharino to add a couple more codes to the uh, to the codes to the pot here. We are at over one hundred dollars already. A great deal thanks to DGF's contribution. So if you guys head on over to the Macharino again at exclamation point Macharino, you guys will get even more money in that pot. There we got thirty five codes left. There's plenty of them to go through. So hope you guys contribute as much as, uh, as much as you can uh, at least through the free donations because again you just click three buttons after you log in it's real simple and clean uh, and then you guys will uh, be able to pop in there we, we got we got dawn back on the screen i'll be going back play guy another uh, another player who appeared at uh at frosty's um i don't remember how far he made it he was not Top eight, right? He was like top twenty-four. Um, I forget. I do know that play. I was not top eight, though. I did. I, yeah. I do remember top eight mostly. We're gonna ignore that. Um, uh, I do know for sure that play guy was not. So another rod here that don't to go through. Well, given the way that the set with Jetstorm went, it could get rocky and then immediately, and then, uh, not immediately, but then eventually swing way more in Don's favor. Yeah. Uh, that Jetstorm set was close until it wasn't, I feel like, in terms of, uh, advantage. Unusual, maybe. Too much creation, not too sure here. JA ends up snaking. That was not an intentional cross-up, but my god, was it cool. Yeah, play guy. Play guy was just ready for that like, situation. Be like, no, I'm gonna catch the throw. And doing really good, checking a doll, 5A, and, like, not super high commit. Like, Aurelius can still cover it for sure, which I saw it happen earlier. But, like, uh, a lot of things, as long as you get doll at the screen, it does limit his options a bit more, and, like, uh, if he's not ready for the hit or whatever. Like, you kind of go with three. Oh, and Fatal catches? Or the looks like. It's not Fatal coming in with Fuzzy, but it's really good. That's good for a combo. 3.7, not a ton of damage, but putting Relays on the corner is always a fantastic time. You really don't want to give him many chances to escape and have to deal with all that. Uh, all the doll in neutral, really. J2 and 4B comes out. Play guy just backs off and then eventually scores their hit. It's so weird that I still got the TV game to cut down the nose. And throw, this should be enough. Oh, this is definitely enough, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Quick kill right here, and we are going to the last round of game one. This will perfect. No birch spent in the result being for that round. Yeah, somewhat surprising, actually. Normally, both players are pretty inclined to burst or OD, respectively, depending on, like, the situation. Like, Play Guy tends to burst a decent amount, um, especially if he's feeling desperate in a certain situation, and Don often ODs in order to, like, recover the ball. Uh, kind of like in this situation, normally we would see, like, a, an OD start to come out here. Uh, but instead, it's going to be the burst after the fatal counter once again from Play Guy here. Don trying to send out Dahl to get some action done here, but because that blue, uh, because the bar is blue, Ignis takes even longer to come out, and she's already mad damaged, so it's gonna be a bit tough for Don here. Oh. We see counter it, however. Yeah, that's actually really good. Dahl just came back. It's like a third Dahl is confirmed, so now it's got all the players now or two of pressure. Like I just find the DP out, so not afraid. Ooh, okay. The, uh, the, the, the late 60s there, catching a mask maybe? I'm not too sure, but those 60s are devious. Oh, you can't do anything? I wonder if Play Guy tried to uh, barrier there and then ended up getting JP. That used to happen to me a lot. Um, fun fact, if you're in the middle of your air dash, you cannot barrier at all. You are committed to that animation, so even if you hit 4AB, you're going to get a JP to come out instead of your barrier. That was meant to be. Oh, yeah, that was rotten classic. Yeah. That was definitely DP and TC came out. But it worked out. Yeah. Game one, going for play guy here. And again, it really could be anybody set. I genuinely have no, f no, I can't say I am favoring one player or another. Oh, goodness. JA connects with the 2D, but 
Play out still actually managing to get out of there on top. Oh, no, you pressed against Tier 4 B. To drop on the OD confirm though. Drop, yeah, and oh, really didn't get a lot back from that OD confirm. Great anti air confirm here though, Ryan Ball to come back in full. Now play guy. Yeah, kind of great map in here. One touch away from death. Oh god, really here to edit. All right, things are looking pretty. Things aren't looking too bad. OD's available for Play Guy. It's about 60% for Dawn. Ooh, trade here on the doll. Nice spacing using the 5A. I honestly thought that Play Guy would have expected to be a block stun and then would have gotten hit. Interrupting the doll once more, and that gives them free reign over the neutral here. Honestly, just bullying their way into Dragon's Great Normal. Jeez, you connecting once more. 6A from the hard knockdown. It's time to guess, friends. 6A. And that's all she wrote. Pops the OD there to keep Ignis nice and happy for the rest of this confirmed here. EA connects, not going to be enough to kill. Even with the act. Yeah, seriously. Oh my oh. god. Cross up DP. Jump scare. If OD available, this next hit can kill. As long as it's like a B normal or a throw. Oh, okay. uh, the yeah, devil yeah. of B normal. Oh, right there. Getting that 3C. Play guy barely hanging on to that second game here. Yeah, yeah. Looking, looking to try and wrap this up quick. What's that 2 0? Would be a nice little pin for this bracket. Oh, there's the sprint and the, the super jump into the 2D. Alright, Ignis is gone. You suddenly get the white back. Play guy is pretty respectful still. There we go. Finding the white pin. Staggering. Jesus, I have not seen a person mash into like Doll moving forward the way that Play Guy has in a while. And much less just be as successful as Play Guy is. Yeah, you like you are at risk of still getting hit by the Doll, but. Okay, like, doing great on checking the Doll and stuff. Oh my goodness, 60 comes up just in time. No! Trying the fuzzy jump and gets caught. He's still alive. I uh, got overdrive, a whole stick of butter, has plenty to work with here. He also oh! got a. Oh! Yeah, no, you can't. Oh my god, here we go. No CA, way. RC the CA. Holy chip is possible here. Chip, yeah. Can't jump up into the air. Oh my god. Just chip him, just chip him, just chip him. Oh my god! Whoa! Wait! Play guy! You're a madman, you're a madman, you're a madman, you're a madman, you're a madman! He is cooking! I genuinely don't understand how he did that. I don't comprehend how that happens. He's like, I know it's my job to explain, but like, what more can we say? <laughs> This dude has plot armor, man. He did what he needed to do. How's plot armor? Nah, I don't care. Not that he dude. did what he needed. He got plot armor, man. He got plot armor. That was crazy. These protagonist players, they just do what they want and things work out for them. And I love that for them. Genuinely. That was so fun to watch. Jesus. That was, that was crazy. Good God. Yeah, that was... That's just a lot of call out. I just don't even like two and four D there. Like, what? He was like aware of Chip. I guess he just was like, "There's gonna be a gap, or Dawn is gonna do a special, and I'm gonna have enough time to hit my two one four D 
because there is like, I don't know the exact frame data, but there is a little bit of inbound somewhere on the rising part of blood site. Not frame yeah. one. But it takes a while for that to kick in. It's at least like, uh, damn. I know, I know it's not within like frame five or something like that. Let me look this up actually. Now I'm curious. Jeez. Oh, okay. Because it's not like fast invuln. Yeah, it's frame five body, foot, and projectile invuln. That is actually kind of fast. But even then, in that situation when there's like, I think what was the bias going on? Oh, that's like crazy. That's crazy. It's crazy to me. <laughs> he made it work. So what can I say, he right? Made it work. He, I, honestly, I'm it, like the call out or like the the blood scythe, like just do it in pressure. There was pretty big. But the confirm after that, he actually got like the the dash five C J C gauntlet confirm was pretty pretty nice. Cause that can be a little tricky depending on how far you are, and you have to like really delay the gauntlet there yeah and like if that dropped he could have just lost it all still yeah that was just peak dicey that is that is what we call risk taking so we have monarch in this bracket dude yeah monarch is in here you just it's been a while we're glad to have you back and i'm assuming you're just gonna try to beat up everybody here which is fair fresh, fresh off the frosty's victory Did you have donated another hundred? Uh, yes, according to... Okay. Shoutouts to DGF for loading the pot even further for these players. Yeah, we... That was... that. Is, you're nuts for that, DGF. I... I appreciate your contributions to the scene from teaching people to putting out your videos and your sets and also to just, like, Funding a bunch of money in random in, in a bunch of tournaments. We, I, I appreciate it greatly. Seriously. Yeah, folks, remember, this is a Rambat series. The prize is, again, like a, a trip to Boston for our regional, you know, beach episode camp out. And now this bracket also has the stipulation of uh, sharing a prize of over $200. So if you guys want to increase that pot and make it even crazier, head on over to the match arena. We got Cats versus Monarch here. Tries to quick rise right there on the 2 and 4D, the counter hit right there on the Rekka series. Possibly a 2 2D, no, Monarch's IED's out instead. Using that spike chaser just to cover that ground space, make it difficult for Susan. That'll catch the IED as well as just a straight dash out. So really good for Monarch to cover the space like that. Genuinely can't tell. Speaking of highs and lows, however, Connecting right over here, combo drops. Things are looking a little awkward here. Potential CA coming up, wheel connects here. It'll be available for Cats. Can't kill quite yet. He needs to find one more hit to get it done. There it is, right on cue. The oops all loaded. Yeah, that 214B is really powerful for catching people trying to fuzzy guard in certain situations, as well as catching some fuzzy jumps in uh, others. It can be really weird, but uh, it's really good, especially because all of the hits of that starting point are low. So it's really, really good for catching people in uh, blocking high or jumping. <laughs> Wow, Ford is available as well. Really, really point uh, on point with those reactions there. Not quite there for the entire combo here. Air throw connects once more. Probably just going to take Cats all the way over to the other corner here. JC ends up connecting. 100 meter to go with. Keeps their turn with the RC here. Things are looking a little dangerous for Cats. OD's in response. Or burst in response, rather. No TRM. TP is unlocked for Kets. Nothing coming out yet. Monarch stringing up with a ton of lows, just trying to catch that DP, but no dice from Kets. They are not revealing any of their secrets. Almost 30 seconds left on the clock. Life lead is just barely in favor of Monarch here. 6A connects. 5B counter hit, and that's going to be game one for Kets here. Monarch actually working pretty hard on this comeback right there, but Kets just shutting it down right there. 
Getting a game up on Monarch here. Yeah, that... I honestly was... I could not tell whether that was going to be a comeback in the making or not, but Ket's managing to put it down for that first game. The wheel of fate is turning. Rebel one. Let's see what we got coming in for game two here. 5D whiff and a JA connects. That's a cup. That's just one seal unlocked. The wheel is still great to have as season. Early AD, getting defense, there. Going corner to corner, coast to coast. Worse from Cats, but I'd argue the damage is almost already done. Another 2C jump cancel, and that's going to get called out with the air from Monarch here. Let me tell you something. When I was practicing Jin back in the day, I was doing 2A jump cancels and all this other stuff. And at a certain point, I found Monarch on net play. He air threw me like three times, and I said, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> I said, I apologize. I, I did not mean to test you like that. Jesus. I mean, no, I, I mean, no disrespect. No disrespect. And Monarch is normally the type that like sits down on defense. Like, greatest strength, arguably greatest weakness. But when you are jump canceling a lot on him, by God, he would look for an air throw. 3C Ender here gets the wheel late air dash mix. Yeah, really needs a big counter hit or a good OD to kick in. Jumping over the 6A, actually getting the counter hit with the uh, drive as well. It's here, not going to be enough to kill based on the starter. Another mix. Alright, Monarch firing back, tying it up. 1 1. Looking a little more comfortable there. Yeah, he's definitely finding his footing and making it well known. Now we could see a potential upset here with Cats taking it over Monarch, but the guy's still got a quite a big hill to climb. And don't call him the king for no reason. is not out until he is out. PRM there on the air throw, or the gay air throw. No one's ready for that. Dude, air TRMs are different. Every time I see one come up, I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. You are just thinking like four steps ahead. Really pick up the offense now. Running up, got a crush trigger. The full field confirmed. Jeez! Blocking the CA as well? Yeah, let me tell you, he is locked in right now. Yeah. Monarch woke up. Uh, he, yeah, he's up. He, he, I, the, I cannot believe he was like, I'm just ready for that counter. Okay? One I'm talking about making the, right now, this is like talking about making the first game look like it was for data. Jesus. We are seeing a return to form already in about two seconds. I say return to form after he's won a championship, my dude. For the for the little speck of time that is this bracket, you know? Yeah, my man flew home from Brosties and was like he gave himself a day and was like, I don't know, take my too. Yo, you went straight from PS4 to PC. That is that's doing a lot, I'm not gonna lie, but hey, I get it. Sometimes you finish up with an offline bracket and you feel mad at the invigorating just keep playing the game. Good OD on the 4D, not quite going to connect with the 5D afterwards, however. And if Monarch can delay enough of this time, yeah. Both overdrives are down, but that's perfectly fine for Monarch. Uh, yeah. Legacy Edge into whatever you want to do as an Oh my god. Oh god. Just barely not quite it. All it takes is one more. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a hard battle to win there. Yeah. For sure, for sure. And man, what a huge swing of a set. We saw a close game one, although pretty solidly in favor. Sorry, rather, we saw a game one go pretty decently in favor of Kets. But man, game two and game three, Monarch just up and stole the momentum right under Kets' nose. Yeah, like immediately, like just, uh, just, just. I don't know. <laughs> it just took a set, you know, his hands were a little cold or something. Getting readjusted to the, the PC. <laughs> the PC, uh, 
maybe the port i don't know what it is but he uh he took a quick moment and was like hmm yeah i'm fine oh yeah i, I remember how to play blaze blue yeah they're into a little in the room i actually don't have a bracket open right now so uh not quite sure how we're looking at here um that is all good a-okay okay. this is going to be fuzz versus richter oh richter is back the boston boy himself the Springfield boy, I guess. No. Spring <laughs> <laughs> Western Mass is another state, man. That thing, it is a different place. <laughs> I love, like, we call that, like, Western Mass, but I feel like it's, like, kind of just in the middle. It's it's not even, like, in the, Okay, like, it is more third... west than the middle, I guess. Yeah, it's more west. It's, like, off-center Mass. Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Center Mass. I don't know Midwest, why. Midwest, man. <laughs> That is the most inebriated sounding thing I've ever said, I think, talking about Massachusetts. But um, that being said, I think this is going to be very crazy. I would not be shocked if these two have played each other before, but I genuinely cannot remember the last time I've seen it on a stream at the very least. I was to say, I don't, I don't know about on stream, but I do, I think Richter does frequent in some, uh, some net play games, so... I would not be surprised if uh, he runs into Fuzz or just even ask Fuzz for some games or anything. Yeah, I know that he's been he's been playing a little bit more. We personally, Richter and I have personally had some sets, and uh, Fuzz and I had a set where he uh, absolutely beat the brakes off me. So we will see how this goes. 2D right there, my friend. You cannot keep 2A in that. Oh, I, say, I saw him. I saw he was in the slow motion. That's the worst part of part of it when you like realize on your last hit that you're getting guard pointed and you don't do something that's jump cancel. I feel awful every time. Okay. There we go. The crossing gives you the immediate stack of enemies that my love. Always looks so slick. On a damage there. Looks like Fuzz is waiting for a drive option to come out with a way they kind of held stance and then suddenly backed off there. Uh, now, don't get it twisted, Richter will still gamble a bit with like 5D and RPS rounds if he drives accordingly, but it's not quite going to be as the uh, to the extent of someone like maybe Kobe, uh, for example, who like, will use a lot more of those drives uh, until you force him to really sit down. Immediate dash uh, 2A man. Like, Fuzz was really. Uh, like, just convinced me that this is, this, like, this was not cover this. He's like, ah, I got it. This one, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's pretty good. And all this one is going to be rich with the drum. I need air to the drum. Jesus. G2A. Oh my god. god. Alright, well, I was saying nice defense, and then Fuzz just got run over. <laughs> When you get hit with two overheads in a row in the command grab, you know, in rapid succession, I don't know what to say. 2D connects on the chain follow-up here. Not quite going to be there with the 5C. However, the 2D does connect here. Using that poison, I'm not going to quite get the full confirm, but that's almost fine. Overhead connects here. Lots of IVs here from Fuzz. No challenge yet, however, oh, 2D no. connects. It should be all seals. He might be dead. Oh, just not a foul. You try to air command grab. JD afterwards. Command grab misses because of the drop. Because of the barrier. Oh my god. Oh my god. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. And his life. He is dead. Yeah, going for the 2D there. Yeah, going for the 2D there makes a lot of sense. Hazamas really, really love to try to left right you and engage very quickly during their overdrives, but they won't often go for a low in those situations. Yeah. Going into game two here now, and this is already a, a set that I think has a breakneck pace here. The wheel of fate is turning. Level uh, <laughs> most of those rounds, there was three of them, but they were all quite fast. Yeah, uh, just seriously, just like rapid fire to see. Ooh. OB there from Fuzz. The overhead zipped right into a fatal counter explosion. 
Not gonna be a lot of damage, but Richter really does like to get his seals. That's already three available. All it will take is one more for all seals to be unlocked, and that's gonna be extra damage as well as Command Grab Super. However, Fuzz looks like does not want to see that whatsoever, getting a couple of big hits here. Oh. Jesus. Just a little too late on the 5D animation right there that's going to get caught by the C follow-up from Stance. Does 5D get low? Um, I forget off the top of my head, but that was after 5D's guard point frame. Oh, okay. It was just too late to hit it, so pretty yeah, pretty much like Wild Bang. The way I like to think about it is like Wild Bang is moving forward. Like, you know, around that time when guard point is moving. Immediate EA from Richter. Surprised that I didn't see anybody else's on uh, Surprised that we didn't see a different option there. Most of the time, Bangs like to go for a little bit more by, you know, dashing out immediately with this button. But Richter playing a bit safer. Still getting caught, and this situation is looking dicey. But the nail clashes with the chain, and then another nail catches Fuzz mid-flight. Fuzz walking out. Looks like the double overhead again. This time, Richter is looking for burn. Oh my god. Another 2D. Oh, the nails. Oh, the nails. I know it. I knew it! <laughs> but the, wait, the bumper I think messed up oh. the car. We can go into Astral! Yep. Uh, I was like, that's a, that's a fun special. He loves doing Astral, and he's very consistent at it. Considering yep. the input is pretty impressive. Yeah, it's a whole pretzel input. I think you can do a... There's like a simpler way you can do it using CF's buffer. I forget if it's double half circle or what. It's double uh, half circle, but you have to do it. You have to end on three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's really really weird in that way because you got yeah because you gotta end on the the last thing of the thing. Uh, sorry, the last direction of the astral input. But yeah, really 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 close right there, and honestly, just good recognition off of that because uh, Azama can combo an astral off of pretty much any two D strong hit. So yeah. Oh, and the delay chain actually beats the 2D that Richter went for right there. Not sure if you saw it, because it was kind of... You saw a bang at, like, the very small part of the corner there. Richter trying to dash out of the corner, becomes backdash, but the 5D connects just a little too high for the rest of the confirm, however. Spends the nails for it. Never forget the bumper rule. If a bang has a bumper near you, they will use it for a mix-up. Never believe that they will not, I swear. Air throw comes in right now, not able to follow up quite yet. Tries to JD the counter assault whiffs because Bang is on the other side. Okay, uh I'm not sure how much of that was intentional, but I Rick think that was just it. one of those janky situations that Rick would just react. Did you JD? When did he? I didn't even see the animation. I just saw the explosion. I was like, oh, like this must have happened. He can just do that. Great JAs to catch Fuzz in the middle of moving. 5C comes out with a dash. I wonder if that was meant to be command grab instead. No, I think he's going to be command he wake up OD of all time unless Richter can put Fazama away right here and right now. He's gonna be able to dash cancel off of this bumper, but he doesn't have the meter for a for a like double super, nor can he EA afterwards. What's the mix? Cross under 5A! Fuzz rightfully so just wakes up with an OD. Double 6B, no bumper cancel. Bang's just too far away because of Fuzz's barrier. He's gonna get the life steal with a solid hit here. Resets into the J2C, gets the 236A, goes into stance, blocked by Richter here. Who Iron Dash is back oh. into air throw. Whiffs 5B connects from the side swap. Potenja now. Active flow is still going on. There's a ton of damage. But my friend, we are going to see another OD come up here. I am willing to bet everything that I have that Richter will click an OD sometime in this round. I swear it. Oh my god. Never mind. He just nails, delays his momentum. Oh. The fuzz is burst! Command grab super, buddy. Oh, he's recovered! Command grab the command grab super! OD comes out from Richter in the middle of the air. He's gonna air dash. He's gonna air dash up. 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 He does indeed do it. Swaps oh over god. sides and then finds the hit on Fazama. 
Oh my god, there was... There was a lot that just happened at the end there. Within that last... What was that, like 15 seconds? 20 seconds? I need you to understand that if I were not commentating that, my brain would have just, like, demolished and crumbled right before anyone's very eyes. That was hilarious. And yeah, as Matt is pointing out, Hazama's command grab is indeed actually throw in So That is why uh, that interaction happened. Uh, I hate it. Bullets command grab is throw in vault. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's probably why that ended up happening. I don't even know if Fuzz tended to do that. He probably could have technically just jumped it, but anyway, that was just nuts. I think he... That was it. I think he did. He likes answering with that. And I think it was pretty smart. Um, he sort of, he was sort of fishing for it, I think. Because he was doing like some up backs, but he would do um, jamaging to kind of get back to the ground fast. Because if you're in the air and you don't have like OD or something reliable that hits like behind you, like you just get gotten there. There's no actual answer. You are that is like a checkmate scenario there. You are gonna take that grab. Yeah, I was whew. Jesus man. Yeah, I know <laughs> the like, end of that last game. There was a there was a lot happening there. Okay. Uh I don't know. Uh, this is that was a very breakneck crazy set um surprisingly calm for the majority of it and then everything started hitting the fan and like they, they, they made sure we were awake right by the end of yeah i am because happy i did not wake up the neighbors i'll put it that way paying make sure we're paying attention next up we got coming up here this is going to be a rematch of a combo breaker set actually this is going to be play guy versus monarch if you guys remember from Combo Breaker 2022, I believe it was, uh, where Play Guy had gone up against Monarch, nearly beat him, uh, but ended up losing in the last game of that set. So curious to see how this will go. Play Guy has shown that he's very much so capable of defeating Monarch. Uh, it's all about just clutching it out, I think. Yeah, and like, uh, it, it can be pretty hard to do against uh, a player like Monarch, so. Especially when you're, uh, Thankfully, Lambda is a relatively honest character herself, so uh, not too much uh, lies and deceit, so to speak. Yeah. And um, got the early finish there on her like uh, her stand set. So now contesting, the runner from the raw OD. He just barely got enough time. He had like a millisecond left for that EA. There. That is honestly kind of nuts i would not expect that if i were play guy he like tried to block for a reversal option and then the ea came out just slow enough we did not want to see that first oh yeah so well, i don't even know if monarch meant to back off for the first or if that was just a like decided decision in his head already i i'm willing to bet that he got hit and his hands just like clicked the button before his mind necessarily processed that monarch didn't even like, command dash in but uh Finding uh, the hit to close out the game there. So, despite being down, uh, completely down a burst, he does have an entire round here to play with. And getting an early burst from Monarch there. Good throw tech. 5B ends up catching the IAD back drive from Monarch here. Great position for Play Guy. Trying to look really, really hard for a. Uh, honestly, just a TRM from uh, to get Monarch here, but Monarch managing to find a time to back out. Else Fang is blocked. Play Guy gives up their turn. Play low, just sniping Play Guy right there. Maybe catching a fuzzy jump or maybe a fuzzy guard. Oh. Jesus, I think that was like a whiff by Vayner. Reason of yikes. But it's here for Monarch, but the drop combo is going to make it a bit awkward. He backs off in time, but Play Guy catches onto the change of momentum and chases accordingly. down on the combo there and bring Monarch to the corner, but Monarch is maxing out with 2A. Oh my god. That was really smart for Monarch there. Uh, the reason being is that 
the overhead there launches very high. So even on RC, um, Monarch, if uh, Blade Eye didn't burst, Monarch could have gone into like a combo, probably using drives there that to keep the burst safe. And then on the burst, as you saw right there, Monarch can then confirm, block it, can get the hit, block it, and then still kill anyway due to having 100 meter available. Really good awareness of the resources and what that allows you to do. Yeah. Monarch playing keep away with Play Guy, just dashing in and out here, weaving about the stage and sending a lot of spike chasers at Play Guy. Same side, but just off on the throw timing there, gets the TRM as a result. Alright, nearly 50 meter from Monarch, this means a super is most certainly inbound here. 2 2 D to get out, no, Legacy Edge is a little early in order to keep it burst safe. Overhead went. I mean, the overheads went hard enough. The overheads went crazy, but I think what's really notable in that game one especially was Monarch's willingness to mash and escape. Arguably, yeah. you know, Monarch's greatest strength is his ability to straight up block out of a lot of situations, but in some cases you could argue that's his greatest weakness in that he's willing to take a lot of offense before he does something. So showing a willingness to mash out super early, given his reputation, as well as try to escape early, I think is definitely going to throw a wrench in Play Guy's expectations. Ooh, yeah, Play really great there. You can start up a 5 so you can swap on it. Doesn't quite push the turn, but does a Play Guy in the corner here. Keep him locked in with the RC. No, good extension here. And Play Guy will not be dead yet, but next hit for sure. I'd say this round is a foregone conclusion, but we already saw the result of Play Guy versus Dawn earlier today, so I really can't count him out until the round says it's over here. Now we gotta Just a slight tick of health. Really good from Play Guy. He's not using Barrier on the last swords there. Remember, Lambda's drives, as well as New 13's drives, they don't chip, it's just their specials. So you don't need the whole Barrier for that. However, it can be difficult, of course, to react to you know, Lambda, especially suddenly going in with the command dash, especially canceling off the drive. So, got to be very careful. 6D catching the 22D actually. That invul on 22D is not super great, to be honest. Which is why it gets caught out in situations like that. 5B just looking for something from Monarch, but he is not yielding. Look at him standing still. 6A to catch a jump, nothing. Monarch is just standing there, menacingly sitting and blocking. Barely any barrier usage either. And those drives from Ragnar, you gotta remember, they do in fact chip. So Play Guy can get a little bit of help just off of straightening up Monarch over time. Just dashes in with a simple 2A, counter hitting Monarch for his troubles here. Now we're gonna have this time. Oh! Oh, did the ender there? It's kind of big. Might have been a little yeah. He was really looking for that Nightmare Edge ender RC into Super. Not able to get it due to the operation we confirmed here. Blue beat combo from Monarch right there. I think that was a DPRC. I legit only saw the the red circle. Yeah, I, I saw the rapid. <laughs> I was like, did he hit something? I was like, what? <laughs> 18 seconds left on the clock. Play Guy can honestly just stall for time at this point. I don't think Monarch can do a legit, legit do enough damage without spending an overdrive. Have it on deck though. I bet we'll not be afraid to use so it if though. he gets the hit. 4D mixed in somewhat there. Due to the Legacy Edge animation, it was so hard to tell what was even going on. Monarch forced to pop the oh OD just to get the kill on time, and he will be rewarded with the second game of the set. Two seconds on the clock there. No life. And Monarch still managed to turn that around and move on. Six Jesus. winners finals right now. And mind you, that was a 2 0, but you could really feel it going the distance. Jesus. Just every round, like towards that end, felt like it was such a battle between both players. And up next here, we've got even more insanity here. Ben, guess what we got coming up next? Um, oh god, hold on. Must be the other side of winners. Ryukasim? Already in the room, so I cheated on that one. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> oh. Oh my yeah. god. Again, we already got Richter back here. Please Dude, this set is gonna be insanity. 
This I'm, yeah, this is gonna be a violent matchup. I feel like if these two if players Yugis, on these two Yugis characters. Yeah. If Ryukasen plays the no. bang mirror, I will start yelling a lot because this There's will no be. Way, right? I I don't think so. I haven't seen Ryukasen pick up bang in ages. I'm unless, just saying. Unless, he's, unless he's doing it like a little, uh, he's having a little fun with it. I, I never know with the guy, I'll be frank. A couple of JAs here, Jalen Reed the Sim. JD with JD action. <laughs> My friends, the party time is starting slowly but surely. 60 beaten by Reed the Sim 6B. Quite enough damage, but all it takes is one more hit. It's a full OD for Richter, but he's got to make a bit more headway before he can weigh that option. It doesn't have any seal. It does actually affect uh, certain properties. Of the oh yeah, for example, that affects his dashes involved, how his dashes function as teleports, as well as a bit more. That is an extremely unusual burst on, of all things, a web nail. Uh, there is. Usually, most bursts can have some amount of debate, but bursting on Carl 623B and Webnail is almost always a dangerous decision to say the least. Because the moves have so much hit stun, the burst startup is super high, so people can straight up react to that. So that was incredibly dangerous. Raw throw coming out from Lucasin. Gotta remember, he does not throw OS. That is just a raw throw coming out right there. Curious to see if we're doing maybe playing around with that accordingly, but for the time being, he's just looking to get all four seals now. Oh, and oh, confirmed quite. Oh my god, 5D coming to the rescue. And this is going about as I suspected. This is indeed a slobber knocker. Oh, please. Zero fear. Oh my, Richter is hungry One for the fear. Hair short One fear. <laughs> 5D. Oh god. Let me tell you, it is certainly a bonanza with the D button and other associated normals. Jesus. Jesus. 5C. I was not expecting round set ID from him. Right there. <laughs> 5C, 5D. Yo. There's that delay 63B. Bang players will do that all the time. It's a fantastic way to frame trap and keep people from challenging because 5D, most like pretty much all the drives are like quite minus on block. It's just the fact that 2D is jump cancelable. Uh, so oftentimes they'll use 6D as a way of, oh no, 2D again. Oh no, Raw's on Tetsu Connect. Not gonna get the OD under. Subaki is not gonna do much, but she can hear her always that works for you. <laughs> oh goodness! I get suspicious when I see people like parade combos like that. I'm like, I'm just in tech and normal. You're gonna do some weird throw, and I, I just don't want to be a part of it. Yeah, if you see a combo and it's going on a little too long, and they're still juggling you, or just just lock in a minute. Just like just do the like the forward like lean like. It up for a second. They're about to try some cute cool. Yeah. Something, something silly is in that. Oh my god, the jumping. Shocked, frankly. 63 AA connecting here. This is going to be solid damage for Reekson. Put themselves in the active flow to get that barrier gauge nice and healthy for the next round. Oh my god, you heard it. On Tetsu, okay. I think that was meant to be a wake up OD. I would assume it's wake up OD. Uh, I, okay, I mean, that is, that is a big, uh, executioner, executioner, all the players, but like, uh, it's just, like, going through this round now, and you just can up a game, up a round, and you have zero birds. Yeah, especially on a character like Bang, who really wants to make use of his OD, and in this kind of matchup, specifically, where, like, you may want to just get the kill on Hoffman before he has a chance to really act on his own OD, sealing the deal is important. To get no, He's gonna clip by a lot of these normals. Yeah. He's taking a ton of damage from like stray uh JCs and JTPs as he's trying to approach the escape. Okay, point of is closing here because I'm gonna get burned off the ender again with JT. First, now on deck, 
using to use it, they don't want to do it like another uh, reset and reaction button. Yeah, I think that... Oh, hold on a second, we'll get to it in a moment here. Bang, sending out the nails. You didn't bury her on time. Oh, no. I think he wanted to dash into the uh, void in order to finish its hits, since Rikusum had backed off, but he just didn't bury her on time and got caught the dash. Yeah. Or, oh yeah, Rikusum pointing out they wanted 2D. Yeah, 2D is another possible option there. Oh, he ran in to try and drive it. Yeah. I, I understand the vision, but ultimately the 2D into step is risky because honestly, if you're Rikuzen, you can just like hold the 2D at, at a certain point if you think you're going to teleport in. Uh, either way, though, very fun set from both players. That was a, a lot of craziness. Yeah, and a lot. Richter, not even out of it yet. That This was still winner's side, so Richter still has a chance to kind of climb back to the losers. Yeah, he's going to be hanging out right there in the in loser's top eight, while Monarch is still sitting pretty in winner's finals. So we will see uh, Monarch and Reek with some set coming up. Uh, and on the loser side here, we do have Cats versus Dawn. Looks like that's the set that we're going to come up here next. Uh, do you have anything that you're kind of interested in seeing for this uh, set, Ben? Um, I guess... Uh, hmm. this, uh, so obviously, mm, not a very very fun matchup for Susan, especially at the start here, like, like, Dawn can just back off, and with, like, poor mobility, and no one locks, Susan can't really do much, I feel like, um, like, even 6A can kind of get, uh, nullified by just, like, wheel or wife going forward, so, uh, Ket's gonna have to kind of... Like, I feel like navigate the neutral well, but like Susan does have a pretty big meaty button, so he can still clip Don, uh, like with 5B or JC or something, JB. Uh, mm, I see, I see. And when Susan gets Rebel going, one. I guess, like, uh, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's fair game. Relius with, uh, not the greatest defense options, Susan's definitely just smothered him. So we'll see what goes on here, but for the time being, Kets managing to get some of these initial hits in. And this is looking quite nice. DT unlocked as well as Sword. That's going to be super great for swiping the screen. It means that should Dawn not die in these interactions, Kets really just frankly gets to look at Ignis and say, I don't think you should exist. <laughs> Much better than what I was just thinking the picture of. <laughs> and I mean, it's really the thing that, like, sending out... It's just the fact that it's just a massive... You really have to just say, like, yeah, good luck. Oh my god. Enough time after the 5A. And okay. so that was nice. Check the Dawn with 5A and recognize Dawn was coming in for, like, the air approach there. Yeah. So it came in the 2C, and while it didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't uh, like, cleanly win, it traded a very interesting favor. Oh my god, two Yeah, that was a GameStop trade for sure. Alright, Don has to unsummon in this situation, trying to get the doll back. 5C ends up counter hitting, catching a mash attempt from Kets here, and things are gonna look a lot more difficult this season. No barrier here, Kets still gets to maintain their turn. The jump cancel off of the 2C, but still going to get clipped from Don here. Got the full Ignis back on hand. Not gonna be enough damage to kill here, but hard knockdown of the 2 and 4C into TRM. Delayed the throw there, just like did a did an extra little dash in between. Them. Check yeah. in to see if it's maybe just kind of doing it uh, on Jacob if he's done closely. Yeah, characters that get to use delayed hits like Relius with Ignis are really, really good at TRM because you get to dash up at people, make it look like you're gonna throw in advance, look for the throw OS, and then just TRM them while you're like projectile or your doll. It's really good. 2B comes out, but it's really difficult to OD against Relius when Dahl is out. He can still command Dahl to 6D, and that's usually what ends up coming out. Yeah, 
I think that was Don not wanting to swing and uh, test his luck against a uh, 6B recovery. Yeah, I am quite surprised that a uh, 6B, uh, that he managed to keep control from the whole thing to 6B. That's true, actually. He's not going to connect there. And I think at this point, if I'm Kets, I might start to look for more throw opportunities just to catch the uh, the spin a bit more often. Same side mix is going to connect against Kets here. This is at least one more knockdown into a potential kill scenario. Trying to spin for a burst, 5C into dual bios, and it's time to guess once more. Let the full duration play out to keep it as burst safe as possible. Then that 2C jump cancel along with 4D also keeps Relia's burst safe there. Yeah. Kinda checkmate there after getting hit by the dual bios. Because uh, counted as a super, you cannot burst uh, any of the doll hits. And yeah, that end right there, we did 2C into the like doll nail there. Uh, it kind of has its own little loop and keeps it extremely burst safe. He does not even commit to like, anything up that block. Yeah, he's just chilling there. Goodness, a lot of air to air interactions, mostly going in favor of Susan, but at the end of the day, Katz is the one that bursts here, and Dawn is chilling with a full gauge available. And then after that, OP out of it. Or not OP, yeah. <laughs> DP out of that. That will be. Oh, yeah, the JD. Oh, that was definitely meant to be a, a DP right there. That 60 was not intentional. 6D catches the backdash there. 6A interrupted with the JA from uh, Dawn here. Another 6D, but like... I don't know. A couple of weird input situations there. I don't know if these are necessarily drops or intentions getting fuddled. Uh, Tension's getting a little mired here, but a little messy right there. Wow, okay. ID in order to punish the 6D. Makes sense given that 6D ends up uh, reeling his hurt box back afterwards. Since he reaches forward so much here. Alright, we're still in this here. Nice 5B, 6D pressure here from Dawn. Gonna pop the OD in order to keep the doll gauge up. And it is looking very difficult for Kets here. About 40% burst gauge available here. You've got Aurelia sitting at about 50 meters here. And you know that after this next potential hit, it's gonna be. Tried to wake up 6D. It is not gonna work out in favor of Kets. That is going to be the set for Dawn 2-0. Now let's see what we got coming up next here, folks. Uh, as we're moving along in our top Fuzz, eight. Right? Fuzz versus I don't actually know who. Fuzz versus Matt. No, you're right. You're, oh, you're right. Oh, I guess no, there's no bracket in front. You're of me. simply correct. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm just right, and, and that's just how it goes. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, did, did we did we see them fight already or no? No, we've okay. seen them. We've seen them fight against each other so much at this point that it is genuinely like just one of those sets. Oh, like, okay, okay, but it hasn't happened like this break. Yeah, it's like one of those like was this the scheduled event yet, or are we waiting a little longer? Okay, we're waiting a bit more now. One set in the bracket. I know. I know it needs to happen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, there's just the usuals here. Uh, just want to remind you guys while we're waiting on this next set, a couple things we got going on here. We have our Guilty Gear plus our bracket that will be tomorrow at 8 p.m. Same time, same place. Twitch.tv, Boston Blue Beat. And you can catch all of our stuff on our Twitter or our YouTube channel, also Boston Blue Beat. Uh, and we have Undernight System Celeste that's coming up on Wednesdays now at 8 p.m. Uh, we're going to have a lot of, excuse me, I'm betting we're having a lot of people signing up for that bracket. So if you want to join in on all the mashing action with the new game, by all means, come and check that out there. Uh, one I, last uh, thing. Oh, yeah. Go. No, keep going. Thank you. Thank you. All good. Uh, one last thing we got going on is the match arena. We did get $10 for CM Sora. Thank you so much. It was fun watching your sets at uh, Frosty Faustings as well. Uh, so be sure to finish up those codes. We still got 22 left. We got plenty of people and plenty of time to get those done. But sooner the better. Yep. We jump in 
right in here on one of the bluest stages ever invented with both characters sporting blue colors. I don't know why. I don't know why that sentence fried me. <laughs> I can be hard to keep track of the Nikki guys right now. Oh my god. I don't know, but if someone has some like blue color blindness watching this, I am so sorry. I'm genuinely different. You see that I mean it must be a whole lot of like some I don't know what. Um, anywho, this matchup. Yeah, uh, this matchup is kind of a is one of Hazama's many cat and mouse matchups, as most of them go. Uh, Nato's got a lot of very cool options that he can use to kind of get through situations. Uh, we'll get there when we see perhaps a bit more neutral action. Right now, these guys are playing very quickly. Pretty awkward situations right here with the J2C connecting here. A lot of chains and mats getting clipped piece by piece. This should be it, assuming that Fuzz finishes this combo. Alright, there we go. Uh, so one of the really good things that Naruto can do in this matchup is his 2A, actually. That 2A is stupid good here. Uh, it lets you low-profile 5D chains uh, as well as JD uh, by proxy. So you get to snip, you get to, like, get to just barely slip under there and then do, like, 2A into 5A or 2A into 5B. Uh, you know, just, like, in general, find an anti against the Zama. Yeah, dude, his low profile, that low profile is so stupid. I booted up the improvement mod and was like, okay, what's going on here, actually? It's literally just because he shifts his head. He just tucks his chin in. That's it. Like a boxer. He just tucks it in. And then that's just low enough to low profile mad stuff in the game. Oh, but yeah. Oh, man. He's having a real tough struggle here trying to get this going. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's a lot of actions happening on the screen here. Fuzz likes to play extremely quickly, so it can be difficult to get your head on straight, especially if the momentum is not in your favor. Like, suddenly Fuzz will, like, chain in, like, three times, and then you're just kind of, like, getting hit here. Um, oh, goodness, Command Grab coming out here now. In fact, I thought he on the Oh, I didn't even realize. That might not uh, that might not have even worked because Hazama Command Grab is invul. They might have just yeah they might have just whiffed on each other, I guess. But yeah, it would have been very very weird. <laughs> um yeah, Matt kind of just getting suffocated there. Uh... Yeah, it's so the other thing that's really important for this matchup is that as Naoto, you really want to keep moving. If you are seeing, like in general against Hazamas, you want to note their chain cadence, the way they cancel their chains and try to bait you into doing stuff. Uh, but because Naoto's forward momentum is also really good, like you can force a lot of situations where chains actually hit their dead zone here. Uh, so we're seeing situations like kind of that early round start where like Fuzz ran out of chains actually extremely quickly. He ran out of them within like five seconds. Uh, but because Matt was not necessarily moving quite as quickly as he maybe ideally wants to, uh, he wasn't able to punish it. So there's situations like this where Matt has to like chase very quickly. Uh, as you know, as now to you can still use certain tools like enhanced specials and stuff to catch them, uh, catch the Hazama player. Uh, but if the Hazama is on point, you know, they can do J4G, they can J60, hell, they can even like 2B or 3C or 236A if they want to stuff certain approaches. So you have to be very mindful of really, like, what you're doing. Uh, it's all about just being patient and knowing that you're going to get your hit in eventually. Uh, but when you're dealing with somebody like Fuzz who's moving so fast and gets to full screen so quickly off of these interactions and there's so many things happening, it can genuinely be very tough to like again like just kind of keep yourself abreast of the situation at hand oh okay oh my god not there with the kai that's really unfortunate to see there jc however gonna be able to get the 5a 2c okay this is great one more knockdown and that should be death on the next combo for matt Plenty of resources to finish the job here. Cross trigger the micro dash 2A. You can see no dash animation. Slow forward there. 
I'm going to shoot a uh, incredibly good uh, six frames compared to most others, which is usually around seven as the average. So, a frame faster than most. And I think I'm still a hit box. Oh, got the AD combo here. Really trying to close it out. Oh my god, the JA. It, it might just be so over. This is going to be burst safe here. It's all a matter of if Fuzz can tack on enough damage. Not quite here, but just one more hit. Fuzz can just play for time at this point. Dashes in, spends all his chains. That's a chance for Ooh. Matt. He gets the enhanced kite, but doesn't get the dash input after the RC. JC does not connect. Big whiffs here. And the J4 and the J60. Or, yeah, I think that was J60 ends up connecting and getting the job done. And, you know, what a very, very fast paced set ends quite quickly here for Fuzz. Yeah, Fuzz just uh, you know. Uh I guess really didn't so so you were talking about 2A going under like 5D and J D, but I feel like Fuzz was just doing good about not using those changes. Did more that were like you like to jump back um I think it's a uh, 6D, J six D there, which just covers like like a like a more direct angle to the ground. So if Matt was just trying to run at him, uh he'd just get clipped. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, Matt tried to like air to air more or like delay an air dash approach or something, but Fuzz was just yeah, Fuzz was just doing good, playing really fast, uh controlling the space pretty well and confirms we're on point. Like I feel like so Matt had a couple unfortunate drops too, so Fuzz got extra chances at life there, but uh, good showing from Matt either way. Yeah, uh, I'll say this, right? The the way how you want to play out a lot of the neutral is it's kind of a matter of push and pull, right? As the Naoto, you want to, as a Naoto, like you are the beatdown, right? If, if any of you have seen the, the Who's the Beatdown article, uh, you should definitely check it out. It's really good for card games and just general competition in 1v1 environments. Uh, but you want to figure out, like, who the beatdown is. Naoto is the beatdown. You really want to aggress and get your hit in and start your turn, right? But the problem is that Naoto, is that Hazama has a lot of ways to bait your approaches. So, as you mentioned, for example, a lot of those, like, jump drive, jump drives from Hazama are specifically designed in a way that they'll catch your dash input. The, you know, they'll catch you dashing forward trying to aggress like, oh, he's out of chains, I can like jump in and now do this. So you still have to be mindful with your dash barriers as well as like dashing and jumping or dashing and he adding hesitations. Because if you block the drive and there's no stocks available, it's almost a sitting duck. There's nothing he can do. And uh, we'll see some aspects of that, even in this matchup too, actually, where Bang wants to play as the aggressor against uh, Relius. But if Relius manages to just wait for a lot of Bang air actions or uses the doll to catch a lot of the nails, Bang is kind of a sitting duck. He still, and Relius has some ways in order to uh, catch people trying to approach him. Like 5B and 2B, or, you know, tools like his 6A, his uh, 2C rather, sorry. So it's all a matter of kind of playing around those accordingly. Good slide swap confirmed here. That's a lot of doll gauge spent, about 40% for not much damage. 2A ends up connecting here. This is looking real good for Dawn. Despite the health discrepancy, all it takes is a few extra knockdowns. Dual Bios is going to help speed that along. Reversal Super into the 2D to teleport away! That was pretty smart. Like, that it was, you know, ready for the class. Maybe we cancel it into something and did that. Oh. You can't counter assault. You can't counter assault. No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, try to purple throw. It's not going to work out, my friend. I apologize. Except I don't because I'm biased for Richter. That's me. A tragic TD. Not connecting in this situation. Dawn punishing quite nicely here. Going to get their knockdown there. Goes for the 2D and jumps over. Trying to look very, very hard for a drive for what they're doing. Uh, I guess kind of just doubling is like a really little processing issue. I think so, yeah. The only problem is that 2D is really expensive, actually. Oh, that's insane. The JD didn't even proc, it delayed Bang's yeah. air momentum to the point where the 2C didn't even connect. I'm actually surprised it wasn't like really like that. Yeah, that was kind of absurd. I was expecting an explosion there, and then Ricky just kind of confirms anyway. Oh my god. Spun right there and made Richter flinch. That's going to be a super to finish it off. Richter will not burst. 
done on a couple of hero bursts, so uh, I'm very glad to see that he did just hold on to that round. No, that was an intentional 6A burst coming out from Dawn here. And Rick, they're using the doll in order to set up a drive and teleport away. But Dawn is still pretty ready for these situations, so he just ends up connecting with Richter right afterwards. 4D in order to catch Richter right out of the air. Gets the D summon right there. JD once again delaying the air momentum so that 2C doesn't even connect. But now Richter this time manages to dash out of there. 2C comes out. That's honestly very surprising. Getting all the shields. Oh, okay. Pop the roll. Oh, oh, command grab reset here. That's the Richter special. He does that all the time. If you're not ready for it, you're trying to get smoked. Yeah. Like, I... Like, so I, I, I'm pretty sure against Richter, I don't even hyper tech anymore. Like, I literally am just watching the combo and where's the, where's the two shit? See, I like, I just neutral tech and sometimes I mash. If, if we're deep in a set with Richter, like, if we're talking like seven games, and I just start matching. That's true, because um, neutral, neutral tech, you, you are kind of falling a bit faster because you're closer to the ground. You know, uh, I forget. I just know that you, you don't, like, dart backwards or forwards in range of the command grab otherwise. So you can neutral tech and on setups that look like that. Um, I think it's Hibiki's Azuna drop resets work similarly. Uh, I know you have to delay a tech on there. I forget if it's if it's a uh, neutral tech or, or like a four tech or something. So don't quote me directly on that one. 2D anti airs there. Not going to connect, but lands the hit. Six Bs, and because it catches Ignis, Richter reacts and then RCs and five As accordingly. I don't even know if he realized he hit the doll instead or if he just wanted the RC in general. But yeah. he's still 5 8 and ended up hitting Tom for you. I saw like the hit effect was like, oh, it must have worked. Oh, I'm in there. Great. Oh, Ooh. You know, I'm thinking it would just work. Autopilot's in the super I guess you get the safe of the doll, but it's still just you need it down, like, down the drain. Yeah, the air thrower ends up TRM. If Dawn did not get that hit, he was about to be in a whole lot of trouble. That Dawn gate was looking real unhealthy. Oh, yeah, he's gonna save it for this next round coming up here. I think uh, if he wanted to, he would have had to have bursted earlier or popped a wake up OD a little, uh, popped up a popped a wake up OD or something. If they're trying to fish for something from Dawn, but he's just not quite getting it. I think it's really important to note that most of the time, Relius is at round start are just gonna play it a lot slower than most. Given that they really just want to get Ignis out onto the field before they really start mounting in the offense. Good fuzzy jump, but still caught on a TRM again. Really unusual situation. Oh, that's 2B startup. Let's see what happens here. Oh, okay, just in yeah. I, well, I don't know. Maybe that wasn't a guaranteed punish, but it looked pretty unsafe. But I think it was. I, yeah, I think Richter wanted to just go for whatever felt guaranteed at the time. The counter assault there is great because it gets Ignis off the field, and now that she has the blue bar, it's going to take a little while longer for her to start regenerating. But all it takes is one, and Dawn manages to find that game here. This is going to be game two in favor of Dawn. We are even on games here. Yeah, so Dawn doing a little better, I feel like, uh, controlling the pace. Like, gets if he gets his mount, uh, offense mounted early, uh, very good at controlling like Richter just trying to do anything on defense like definitely like Richter loves to try to you know take his turn back but Don not letting it uh, sweep by but Richter if Richter just started first it seems like the counter is just either player gets like the momentum is, like heavily in their favor things are looking good here for Don another TRM I swear, Richter's timing on these throw OS's are getting him, like, cooked here. 6A hard knockdown, another throw coming in there. Just a plain old one now. 60 to keep the pressure mounted. And that's a really good dual BIOS on the counter assault. Relius can do that in a lot of situations in order for, uh, to get a counter hit on dual BIOS there. It's a, it's a very messed up situation. Oh, oh tried to 6D, but Dahl ends up sniping Richter. 5D connects, no special cancel, however. Alright, good 
blocks here, but the two DMs are connecting, and that's a burst down for Richter. That's a meaty 2-2-A. You can't mash on that setup there. Relius can even get like a whole like 5B hit there. He's really, really fast. 2D connects. Explosion keeps bang plus. We're going to go straight to the corner here. Trying to look for command grab, but it's not working out here. Damn, so we're getting anything started here. And now he's getting clipped. Dawn actually ran out of the doll gauge, but the JB would finish it off anyway. Yeah, that was rough. Yeah, Dawn taking that set 2-1. Really felt like once Dawn had a much more stable platform that he could just pave his way to victory through better neutral interactions. And I won't lie a lot of those throws just became trms I, I i kept it was really surprising to be honest let's see we've yeah, got I, don't, I, mm -hmm. I like i guess uh, some people might just be doing it on like tech but, yeah it like, might i don't be... surprise how early like some of the throws came out when it was like hard to get in trm yeah, it, it, I, I don't know. I genuinely do not know. But it is what it is, and things are what they are. That means that Richter is gone from this bracket, and Don will get to play the winner of Loser's Quarter. That's going to be Play Guy versus Fazama. And what we got coming up for you guys right now is going to be that very set that will be, again, Play Guy versus Fazama here. So we will get to see Ragna versus. A matchup as old as time itself. Yeah, seriously, no kidding. These I guess two they, characters have been slugging it out for years. Couldn't have said, could not happen in the first game. True. Whew. All right, we got both players loaded in here today. Once again, these two players, and just to kind of set the stage a little bit, these two players, again, are a part of the new blood of Blaze right? Play Guy and Fazama coming up very, very... Play Guy and Fazama coming up in the most recent years, attending a plenty of brackets, getting top eights at some of the biggest majors uh, that CF has had to offer in the United States. Uh, these two players are nothing to scoff at, and these guys are... Definitely going to at a, at a certain point, should they choose to, will you know likely kind of carry the torch in you know future times. So it's kind of important to note there. Uh, that being said, these guys are going to slug it out. I swear to God, something stupid is going to happen. I'm on my bet. So, uh, what's uh, up? What do you? I don't. You you've asked me this uh, a few times already but what are you looking for in this matchup um i'm looking for how fuzz plays against 5a and 6a especially um ragna's ability to place very non-committal anti-ears on the screen can make life a living hell for fuzz and respectively uh, Ragna is not like the fastest character around, so kind of how Play Guy navigates around the neutral and plays around some of Fuzz's very fast action and playmaking is going to be really important here. 2C ends up whiffing here. This is going to look pretty good for Play Guy. 2B whiffs, but Ragna is still fine in that situation. Just one hit a gauntlet, ladies and leaves. <laughs> I get it. Air throw whiffs here. Good barrier usage. 6A connects, however, and that's going to be a confirmed Hotendra. Oh, oh, my God. God. Well, confirmed into Hotendra, and then nothing else, sadly. 6D connects here. Things are looking pretty decent. No burst gauge for Fuzz. If Play Guy manages to get this next hit soon, en hit next hit soon enough, he can actually pop a super and then get a kill here. Another Gauntlet Hades blocked. Blocking it out. Blocking it out. Chains out accordingly, trying to get that max damage there. You see it on the Micro Dash 5C instead of the usual 5B there. Tighter timing, but works at much easier at a closer range in the corner there. Try to get a little shysty in that situation. Not going to work out for Fuzz, and now Play Guy playing it real slowly. 
chains are all gone for Fuzz. A potential command grab whipping. A couple of JAs connecting here, and let's go. Party time, throw connects here. This, uh, these, we, both these guys are playing, like, really fast. Yeah, round one, and if you stopped watching at about, like, you know, 30 seconds to go, you would be a little shocked that Play Guy has more burst gauge than Fuzz. Oh, not a free combo there. Got, like, the reset. Oh, Play Guy just had north right there. The double jump ended up working out a weird man right here. All right, Play Guy's got to work from a bit of a comeback. Nothing, nothing truly insurmountable. Using some of those double jumps after the 6D JD, that can really put a wrench in most people's, um, uh, in the way that most people like to play around that situation. Immediate mash on the JTT as well. Really smart play, uh, play there from Play Guy here. Another Gauntlet Hades block. 6B blocked once more by Fuzz. These guys are trading blows like crazy. JC is missing a couple of swings. Play guy trying to barrier does not want to get caught by the flash kick from Stance. However, they get clipped in this situation here. Depending on how Fuzz plays this out, he might not even need to spend it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. spacing was weird there for the coils to hit, but just because the air throw immediately after on the like, tech situation. Still preserving his, uh, his burst for the next round. Right, this is game one. We are not in the finals quite yet. We still got way more to go. Crouching confirmed here for Play Guy. Let's see what we get for the corner carry. And damage. It's about 3.87. Not too bad. Gets the raw OD out from Fuzz, and that's really good to get it from just like a wake up situation. Clipped by the EA, but frankly, for you know Hazama OD, that is not a bad situation. JC ends up connecting. And Fuzz really looking for those 60 DD reads. Not gonna quite work out. Lands a little ahead of time of Play Guy. Gets a hit in. Burst is available for Play Guy. Let's see if he wakes up with OD. Rolls out of the corner. Air throw connects. This is surely a burst coming up here. So Fuzz wants to keep this as burst safe as possible. Going to go for the 60. Yeah. Sheesh. What happened there? Um, those two started slugging it like crazy. I was honestly expecting Play Guy maybe to go for a wake up OD there. Um, if only because after most of Fuzz's hits, it's a lot easier for Hazama to just straight confirm into Hotenjin and then just do a burst safe route. Um, but either way, it kind of is what it is, you know? Oh god, the JA War of the Gods. Dragon J.A. is a mighty silly thing. You mashed on getting hit. Okay. It was a weak hit thing, so... Oh, it was weak hit. Okay, I didn't even realize. I thought it was just barely at that range. I was wrong. Just throw him. Just throw him. What's he gonna do, Kev? Oh. So where's that happen? He's just neutral. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, now you're in the corner. Oh, suffer. A couple of hits here. No counter result. Alright. Gets out of the corner there, scot free. Double jumps the 2C. Oh my god, just a delay match right there. Not even a full combo! You can just go into super, don't forget! People forget. <laughs> Play guy keeping us on our toes and finding the victory. People forget, but ABC Super is so important for closing out rounds and keeping things first safe. It's the most basic round possible, but you know, it's easy to kind of forget there. A couple of staggers. Play guy really looking for some option from Fuzz, but Fuzz honestly just kind of standing still there. Very unexpected uh, for Play Guy to deal with, but they still managed to find a hit in that OD situation, catching the roll here as well. They're not going to be able to swap sides, so they're going to go for probably a safe mid screen ender there. They don't need to cash out for damage. Next hit kills regardless. Another block, Gauntlet Hades, but this time the throw afterwards kills. Or it leads to a kill round. The air dash, the, the fake double overhead throw. You would expect like the 2B, but no, just, just a raw throw. 1-1. One, one. That's a, it's actually crazy this little loser's quarterfinals match right now. Yeah, because we've seen this kind of all over the place. We've seen it loser semis, winner semis, winner's finals, grand finals, loser's finals. Like, you kind of never know where it's going to be.
Oh. Oh, quick little room issue. No worries there. Yeah, thankfully, let's just make sure. Okay, yeah. Probably just a crash for one of the, for presumably Fazama, but that's fine. Frankly, I prefer no crashes at all, but better before a match starts than during. I was so. gonna say, uh, not getting locked out of spectating the match entirely. Yeah, we would have had to, I'm not gonna lie, stream, we'd be speculating for like uh, three minutes and just kind of uh, gibber jabber and otherwise. Mm -hmm. We should open up the beds if that happens. So oh my god, so bet. true. Yeah, I'll pop over, I'll pop the bets open actually. Hold on a second. Let me let me go into mod mode. Give me give me one moment and we can really we can raise the stakes here with channel points. We can make this a thing. One moment. Making good use of the downtime here on this unexpected disconnect. Dude, sometimes you just gotta make you know, sometimes streamers make do. All I can say. All right, we're gonna make the submission period. Yeah, we'll make it 30 seconds. No, we'll make it. We'll make it a minute. We'll make it a minute. All right, guys, guess, 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 and do it quickly. Got a bunch of people here once again. Remember, this is Boston Blue Beat Burst Limit. This is our season four. We've got a ton of cool stuff going on here for y'all. Uh, remember that this is a Ranbat series, and so each of uh, you know each placement is weighted. Uh, and whoever kind of wins after our last invitation will gets a all expenses uh, gets a you know a paid trip to our regional Boston Blue Beat uh, Beach episode campout. So be sure to keep that in mind as we are going into our last game of losers quarters here for our first weekly. Play guy really trying to pop out a little bit. So much you do aren't stuck. Wow. Ooh. Quick mash from Fuzz. I feel like that's a whole other statement entirely. Thus far, we've seen Fuzz be, frankly, really patient in situations on, on defense, especially when OD, when he's in OD. So, mash out there is probably a little surprising against Play Guy. A couple of chains here. Yeah, I had no idea. No confirm with the Hotengen either. Catches Play Guy trying to move forward with the downwards chain here, and that's going to be the first round of this last game. Really quick there, 70 seconds from the clock. Fuzz with a perfect no burst to use. Looking to move on in the bracket. The JA and JC with, but we're back to neutral. One chain left for Fuzz. And Fuzz managing to stall out just enough time to get to get uh, his second chain back and immediately goes back in. Being real careful here. The chasing JA ends up connects, connecting against Fuzz. Throw does as well, and we are going to go straight to the point. Oh, I may win. Finally getting that TRM when Play Guy tried that earlier, Fuzz had matched the 2A and ended up winning the interaction. Got some angry from Fuzz here. Play Guy really trying to check to Fuzz is going to match on pressure again. Good show it really is. Alright, Fuzz managing to get out once more, finding a hit. Goes for the 2B to adjust for spacing here. Stance mix ups, possible, but Play Guy ends up backing off entirely. 5B ends up connecting, and that will lead to the kill. We're going into last game, last round here. No player has used their burst at all yet. Really surprisingly, too, because normally you would expect to see a burst or OD from both of them, frankly. Oh my god. Jesus. Not there. These two Cs, you know, 2C gets, like, such huge reward for Hirama, but it's very risky but because it has a mad recovery, and its startup can make you, like, can result in him getting hit anyway. Yeah. It's definitely, uh, uh, high risk and high reward. Oh, for sure. reward, there's... Especially on the counter, yeah. This is gonna be about 4k damage. Jesus, that catches the latex. Counter assaults out, but maybe an OD coming by, not too sure. 
2C comes back, but once again, because Play Guy is double jumping instead of maybe trying to air dash or mix up the movement a little bit, it's resulting in him getting clipped anyway. Astral comes out from the confirm and Fuzz finishes off the set. Ending up another perfect with an Astral. 2 1, moving on. New losers. That's the second Astral from Fuzz today. Yeah. God, and it was a perfect damn. They Seven had, golden letters was... with the astral end. Sheesh. Making sure to end that loser's uh <laughs> that loser's round in the or that loser's game in style. Truly. Uh, and these two players have been like super back and forth. Uh, I forget what their most recent uh records have been in, but uh, it's kind of one of those rivalries I would say where like one player will suddenly pull ahead for a couple of weeks and just like beat the tar out of the other and then the tides will turn so it can be a little difficult to uh check for there yeah but yes i will be delivering the points accordingly here uh one moment here let me finish this can i finish this prediction unless twitch glitches out and then i can't finish the prediction oh you already f okay sorry our streamer has already finished oh. it they're they're smarter than me. the third voice in the sky Yes. All right. We're going to kind of run you guys through a couple of the cool stuff that we got going on here uh, today. Uh, once again, I really do want to remind you guys that we, of course, have our weeklies that are coming up here uh, for tomorrow and the day afterwards. Tomorrow, we will have our plus R, uh, our plus R bracket, 8 p.m., same time, same place per usual. Uh, and then the day afterwards, we will have our undernight bracket that will be on Wednesday. Also, same time, same place. 8 p.m. at over here at twitch.tv Boston Blue B. Uh, and then later on in February, we will have our monthly coming up there for February 3rd. So it's coming up real soon. All right. It's literally this weekend. Uh, we will have Blaze Blue, Undernight, Strive, Grand Blue versus Rising, Type Lumina, KOF 15, Rev 2, as well as Sailor Moon S. Yes, we have a lot of games coming up here. Uh, trust me, it's, it's going to be a crazy bonanza. I have to install Undernight on my PS4, in fact, so that I uh, provide a setup. So that's my reminder. Uh, and then no. aside from that, once more, just to remind you guys of the Maturino, we, of course, uh, have a ton of money in this bracket, actually. Like, it's a lot. Jesus, we have over $218, but we still have 18 codes. How the hell do you guys let that happen? We've got more than enough people in the chat to finish up those codes. I swear, it only takes a few buttons. You literally add free money into the pot. It's super easy to do. Please, please, please finish those. Yes, we will keep talking about them until you guys finish those up. All right. Now, that being said, we've got a crazy winner's finals, Ben. We've got Ryukusum versus Monarch. How do you think this set is going to go? Uh... Uh, definitely Hawkman. So this is this is actually I think one of the first matchups we've seen on stream where Hawkman actually cannot just sit full screen and be uh, quite as comfy. Like he kind of can. The risk isn't terrible. And like he has good ways to do it for deck ties, but the threat is there. And uh, like I don't know. Like Lambda, Lambda can definitely. Uh, use that to get in and start throwing offense and especially monarch like you know monarch i'm sure he's playing around all this really well uh i guess it'll just be interesting to see how ryukasim or even monarch i should say deals with ryukasim's defense if uh he gets in because ryukasim always likes to go for some like bigger call outs uh not afraid to show counter so i guess it'd be interesting and counter working nullify projectiles and uh, basically being unpunishable even if Ryukasim doesn't uh, follow it up uh, gives Hawkman some pretty safe ways to deal with certain like Lambda Oki situations mm -hmm. yeah I think it is uh it's interesting, right? Because, again, you really think on the surface level, well, why doesn't Ryukusim just cut the drive smile? Um, but then you have to remember that, ultimately, Lambda still has enough presence by herself in order to 
uh, you know, catch a lot of these, like, sea normals or whatever in neutral on top of being able to just simply throw the swords at different timings. Yeah. Uh, it really, like, cutting projectiles for Hockeyman in, like, often relies on him being either, like, very safely spaced or relies on him, like, being very reactive or, like, just very proactive, right? Like, he can't, like... Against slower projectiles, you know, you can just wait it out. Against faster ones, he just kind of has to send it. So you really have to be mindful. And all of these drives are fast enough that you can't really react to them. So it can be tough. Then there's 4D as well, which just pops up behind him. Hoffman doesn't have anything to come yeah. behind him like that. Uh, that being said, I'm curious to see if Ryukusin might lean a drive. I know he knows that. I hate when he does that. Then I get hit by that. Um, uh... Because I'm curious to see how much Ryukusin will use, like, Yanagi and other drives. Uh, Yanagi and, like, 2D to give him the... Oh, that was super sick for an adjustment. Not quite there on the height, but I actually really messed up that. Game. That was super cool. What? 2 and 4D on Wake Up? Please tell me that was meant to be 2 2D, because I have no understanding of that. You also cut the projectile part of 2 and 4D. That's disgusting. Which is just, yeah, where that interaction goes, or whatever's happened to the interaction. Oh my god, Monarch Snake's in the throw here. This is about to be I just feel it. And kind of looking at it in situations like that, so let's take that J2A as a quick example, right? The J2A is very, like, proactive from the Ukusin because it allows him to cut those, like, 2D swords. But if Monarch backs off and, like, does, like, maybe, like, a back dash into a 5D, he can find himself in an awkward position. Yeah, that Yukikaze is going to proc, but it's not going to catch Monarch. You have to use a strike that is, like, you know, specifically, like, making contact in order to, uh, freeze the opponent there, so. You know, he gets out of there, but... It's drive pressure, it's not super scary, so, you know, pros and cons. He used the uh, Invincible Alter to recovery, too, so there's no sure way of playing where you can set your turn up how you want to. That 5C counter Pokemon Arts 2B that we started, that was kind of insane. I don't know if you noticed that, but I just looked at it and went, what, <laughs> in my brain. Oh, he back that's the throw, but no, nothing on the shimmy! He's baiting something. He's looking for something. He's looking for something. Throw does not indeed connect. Oh, he doesn't have active throw. If he wakes up with OD, uh, this could be a problem. Let's see. Will the combo run out the active throw timer? That's good. Now you just have to do it regularly. Oh or you just eat a Yanagi. You didn't have to do all that. Oh, no. Actually, no. I think he did. No, no, no. I might be wrong. I forget his... I don't know how can his OD cancels off the Yanagi like that, so I have no idea what he could have done for first save. But the IED Agito will get it done. Jesus. Just get my bag into it. Uh, the Monarch does have uh, a little bit more to play with because this is a uh, 3 out of 5 set. Yeah, plenty of time to make some adjustments and figure things out. We saw the last Monarch set we saw on stream, game one, not in his favor, the rest of the set. You can rewind about 30 minutes. Because uh, let me tell you, that was a that was a that was a fight. <laughs> Seeing that situation play out again, where Rikusim is going for the IED like J2C, because that will kill some projectiles. But Monarch just kind of backs off respectively, and he has plenty of time to adjust to the new situation. And in this case, it worked. Whoa! That was a weird Hurtbox interaction there. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That one was strange. I, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Looking at it right now, you can see the ways in which Monarch has already adjusted his OP. Oh, that was so smart. I will explain why in just a moment here. 5C, 6C is going to look real good. Not going to be able to kill. He's not going to build. The Monarch's not going to build quite enough meter. He's going to go for the Spike Chaser Oki. I wonder if he altered the timing on that. The reason yeah. being is that uh, you know, Hakuman can wake up 2D, catch the projectile, and then special cancel out. So I'm wondering if uh, that was a timing adjustment or if Revisim simply just did not have the timing. Yeah. Like, there could have been intentional delay there just so that... I mean, 2D wish. 
so far. Yeah, active flow and OD as well, so he can clean this up. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. RC's in just absolutely kills Ryukasen, who most certainly kind of had to burst in that situation there. Yeah, need, need to try to get out, uh, but uh, another very good uh, RC point for Monarch there, because if the hit hits, still has plenty of time to follow up, even after a, a quick block and check for burst. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Things are starting to heat up over here. Once again, sometimes that first game is just for data. We'll see how true that holds as the rest of the set plays out. So I'm doing really good at just going down one game real quick. And then just... nah, I got you getting pulled down over here. Wow. Oh my god. Good hits here to be. Sees the barrier flash. I wonder, I don't know if that was a if that was just something doing a regular barrier or what. Yeah, just I think keeping just the gravity wall there is really smart because oh that is not an ideal burst. You really cannot uh uh burst against Lambda on drive sequences like that. It is abruptly taken. Yeah. <laughs> Cut short. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh my god. 63 AA getting through, and a lot of weird, unusual drops. And like, a lot of them are just due to weird hurt box or jank interactions. Five feet there. Check the delay tech. Wow. That God. He won't be a 3 q ever. <laughs> so weird. Alright, blocks a 2 6 b I don't think he realized that Reeveson didn't have enough meter to special cancel afterwards, actually. Force he just barely stabs that Monarch. Who pops the RC. That gives them the active flow bonus there. Oh, Monarch trying to get a little shicey there with the throw situation, maybe. But Reeveson just throws in the spawns. Couple of five beasts to check for air tanks, and Rikasen is even on rounds here. Rebel three action. Some from the right here. Okay, that aggressive uh, round start. I do Oh my god. Uh, or five eight into the noble deal. No, sometimes that's just the way it is. Oh my god, just barely backdashing away from the 4C here. Gravity well sent, and Monarch's really just trying to use the gravity well uh, to slow down a lot of Rikus in his movement. It's really good for a couple of reasons. Like, the gravity well really- Whoa! Going around the world, uh, around a Rikus in an 80 day. Wow, that was fast. Take Rikus in with the corner now, just want to set up the gravity well. Oh no, tries to play it a bit more aggressively here. The drive is going to get caught by Rikusim's Yanagi here. And that should be a dead Lambda unless you get a 5D instead of what was oh sure to be God. an EA. Jump up air throw now. And this this set is very much so continuously turning on its head. Drop oh combo from Monarch oh the gate. What? He catches the 3C. How did that hit that low? I cannot believe it. I don't know. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know what to say. I'm I feel I'm going to fall silent now. <laughs> One drop into two drops into the scramble of a lifetime for Ryukasim. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I wonder what's going on here. I mean to go to I think you meant to go to character select, but Possibly. It's all good. Uh, just got to ready up and get back to it. We are still even at... Uh, no, we're not even anymore. What am I saying? We are at, I believe, 2-1. Yes. Yes. up to... Now, is Monarch going to switch? Oh, no. Okay, we should take a minute then, I believe. 
Yeah, might have had to grab the water or something like that. All good, all good. Hydrate. Posture check. Hit the important oh my notes. notes. Yeah, my posture is not uh, <laughs> my ideal. Right I said that, I'm like, yeah, I should be doing that too. Well, I'm like, dude, hold on a second. Give me a moment. Let me straighten up my back a little bit. All right, that's better. Hell yeah. Uh, and that situation right there looks like is what Monarch is kind of trying to set up for, where the gravity well reduces Ryukasama's movement speed there, so the IED JTCs aren't really going to touch Monarch, and you don't need to throw a sword anymore because Ryukasama's not uh, because Hakuna's not going to make contact with you. In those situations, you can just bait the landing accordingly and just play out the situation there. So we see it again, even without the gravity well, Monarch backdashing and then punishing the 3C that immediately came out from Ryukasama. We'll see how that situation evolves in the future. This is. Not a combo, you're gonna get free meter though, so that's nice. Double jumping so hard and still going for the J2C. No tech from Monarch on the stagger, so we get a quick beat. Monarch is really relying on the 4Ds here. Not even necessarily as a mix-up tool, but because the 4D won't get caught by swords. However, it will still proc the drives right there. Drives do proc on both sides of Hoppyman, and he will be able to special cancel it as well. Really important to kind of mind like the spacing and how Monarch's trying to place himself accordingly for Ryukasin's approaches. Just barely whiffing on that part of the act parser. We're fine though. Monarch again just standing outside of that IAD range, trying to play around with it and find a hit accordingly. Gets the overhead that does combo much more easily in the corner, and that will end that first round. Trying to tie it up right now. Old players to the very fun deck game. Oh my oh. god. Oh my god. <laughs> what? He looked for a burst. Yeah, he used this Oh my god. Monarch. Oh my god. Uh, and Mush. Takes a knockdown, catches the delay tech. Many delay techs! That's a lot of meters spending actually catching delay techs. Oh my god, shut up, Boston! Sliding in. Alright, we're gonna go all the way to the next corner with uh, Active Flow and OD, so it's time to guess. He's fucking catch that one, I swear to god. Look at that 3C. Super spaced, oh. air throw connects. He can't kill because he prorated the combo too much, so we're looking at another knockdown situation. I don't know if that was intentional or if that was meant to be a uh, wake up uh, counter assault. I, I, I was like, counter assault would be biggest, like, you were gonna respect this wake up. Yeah, that was that was pretty nuts. I won't lie. What, are you some action on Max 1 right now? Try to get it through Brandon. Inner side brain. Yeah, it, it could very well go either way at this point right now. Jesus, the 63 AAs are putting in so much work catching Monarch here. Things are not looking super up here. At the end of the day, after this knockdown and the next, and potentially the one after that, you have to deal with a Hawkman with an OB and active flow as well. This is going to be a ton of damage, and it's not going to be a kill situation. And Regis and dropping the combo is certainly going to make it potentially two touch now, actually. A lot of double jumps here, but Monarch's feeling kind of anxious. Oh, they're not really opting for much air throws. This is going to get really close here. This is potentially another wake up. Throw is teched. One more hit, we get it done. Overhead connects from Monarch here. And no, I don't think earlier that was even meant to be a counter assault. He just hit that thing on wake up. Another overhead, but it's jumped oh up God. and blocked and 4C. 4C. Monarch kept trying to back. I feel like that situation happened a lot. Where he like he just like the mix up, like Ryuxim blocked the mix up, and then Monarch I guess was just trying to back off and create some space. But Ryuxim just kept throwing out the four C and catching the uh, the air back dash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was looking very very tough there for to kind of. It was looking tough for Monarch to navigate that situation there. Loki, I'm surprised he didn't opt to go S. Now that I think about it. I, that's why I thought like the character select had, or the potential return to character select was gonna happen, but stuck out with Lambda. Well, I guess we'll see if he uh, 
potentially gets the run back if he decides to approach it with S or any differently. But until then, first we got one more losers match before losers finals. Yeah, we have our loser semis coming up here, and this will be Fazama versus Dawn, a another very common matchup. This um, is the matchup I think I've seen the most whenever I watch like our our online weekly events here. Yeah, these two are good friends. They tend to meet each other in bracket very frequently. Uh, not much more to say on that end. Got him in the room now. Hold on, what's the, uh, what's the Maturino looking like? Maturino, is, I believe, is still looking healthy, but it could be even better. 14, yeah, we could definitely get those 14 squeezed out too, chat. Hit up those free codes. I, I've seen, I feel like we've seen some, some pretty, uh, like some pretty clean Please and pretty nutty play. Like, there's been a good mix. Mm-hmm. see what we get over let's see what we get coming up over here now i again these two have played quite a bit i if i remember correctly and please correct me if i'm wrong in the most recent brackets these two have run into each other don has generally uh had the lead in sets i don't have the data in front of me no sheet no nothing so sports uh sports stats nerds i'm afraid i have to disappoint you this is just off the back of my head that's my source The numbers in my head. The numbers are in my head. This is not Black Ops, though. What do they mean? What do they mean? It took me forever to actually get to that game and play it. No idea why. It's pretty fun. Anywho. The wheel of fate is turning. Let's see what these two players got for us in this slugfest. Still two out of, it's two out of three for these guys, so it is a do or die. Get a doll usage there, but 2D's going to set up a sandwich situation actually after the cross up there. Don spending the OD to maintain Don, but we're still at mid screen, and that means Hazama can always find a way to escape. Don looks like it looks like Don is implementing a lot more of the um, uh, super jump 2D's here in an attempt to kind of just like get out of dodge. Oh god. However, I honestly forget the 5B connects with no hit confirmed there from Fuzz. 2C, however, and this is going to be a good starter here. What every house in the dream is open. And you're a little too close to that. And it's something about those JCCs, man. They they all hit you high, and you're like, okay, surely this time he will go low and land with 2B. I'm telling you, as I get cooked by this, that JC landing recovery is big enough to win. You just gotta be confident. Oh my god. Fuzz trying to be Fuzz trying to do a lot with the 60 to do there. Big fan of hard callouts, but you gotta be very mindful about it. 623D, we're gonna take Relius all the way to the corner, chain in, and it's time to block unless it's not up for J to get it done. It wasn't mine, but I said it's time to get it's time to not walk. This is great. Now Fuzz can... This is great for Fuzz, I should say. Now he can just kind of... Oh no, it's projectile, that's right. Yes, 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 yes. It is a it's projectile, and the end will actually end the moment. It's kind of nice, I think. Yeah. Oh, don't burst, don't burst. It's really tough to don't burst. Don't burst, don't burst. You can wake up a bit if you really want to. Oh, the late that is. Oh my goodness, this is gonna get a little crazy. Alright, Dawn, now just back off and just wait to call Dawn. You know that Fuzz is gonna do something like that! That genius. Ah. I actually thought Fuzz might have. I thought he was about to lose him. Steal win right there. I had no idea what was going to happen. 
Let me go to the I'm an extra fuzz. Can no longer use the fuzz. I kind of locked out for the rounds, really. Okay. Things are looking fine. Dad Jermaine is going to those 2C. 2C is slow enough and more importantly active enough that it's really going to flip a lot of attempts to get like uh, to play around with the timing. No confirm on the hotel after 6A. That is rough. 2C counter hit, however. Right, things are going to look pretty good here. Chase your seat. Chase your seat. Okay, nice. Caps the delay tech with a 2 for B as well. Oh my god. Even went for the B flash. Yeah, so... <laughs> Oh, oh god, as command grab comes out once again. This is the second time we've ever, this is the second time we've seen it from Fuzz today. Um, it's uh, it's uh, it, it is an option. It's like I feel like it's not even like terrible, but it's not great. But if usually, you know, a site goes on long enough, or you keep it in the back pocket, like no one's really thinking about it. Yeah. And I think on top of that, uh, I think when a option that is more and more interesting to, to kind of see uh, from Fuzz there. You normally don't see it as much, but Fuzz is pretty good at flexing normal command ground. We haven't seen that as much, and instead we've seen more of it. Yeah. Oh, man, that is good for space to be at. And now no chains, and a doll is ready to just look at you funny. Man, Count the amount of with normals this set. <laughs> Crossovers, no confirms. Everyone's getting some little stray hits here and there. Okay, kills the doll. Tries to go for the air throw. Doesn't connect. Jesus, that J is so accurate. Yeah, he's big too. I feel like Buzz was about to try to anti air. It did not matter. That was one of those cases where you just kind of have to sit and block. All right, this is great for Fuzz. You get the corner carry off of this. Now you get the chain in, and it's time to guess who sees still trades. Huh? Very curious. It kills, uh, kills Ignis in this situation. One thing that's actually really important to note: uh, when Ignis is using her like air drive series, those are still considered head properties. So you can just use your anti-air buttons, and especially if they're jump cancelable, you just anti-air jump cancel and then look at route. Super ready to kill. It's over for this round. Uh, which you know, OD does have uh, some involved in or at least active, I think. So the doll was no threat there mm -hmm. at all. Right now, let's see the situation. Two and four B. Good IBs on the Gadlays. It's going to lead to a lot of meter there. Again, I really think that you can afford to jump up a little bit, but now Dallas disabled. Perfect time to start mashing. Mash. Oh my god. Dash through the. Uh... Oh, mess up some input. Still getting it, however. Yep. Finding a pickup despite all of these prior instances here. That's a ton of damage and so much uh, a huge life lead for Fuzz here. You can keep the burst safe and deal a ton of damage as well, but Fuzz is willing to take a burst. Just look at this confirm and watch it drop. <laughs> Drops a little early, but Fuzz is such a huge lead right now. Honestly, not the worst in case he didn't get punished for or anything. He's killing the doll. Don unable to unsummon, and I think Fuzz was expecting a 2 season. He just did nothing, and now he got caught on the 6 he needs a burst immediately. He wants to keep his momentum. I get it. Does have another round. This one goes south, but he is low on burst now. Oh, he RC! He RC the 2A just to block. <laughs> Alright, that should be it. 6A super to get it done. And we are now even on rounds here. Solid here for Fuzz. Gets the 2C, no counter hit, no follow up. Just crouches under the air throw from Don right there. He will not indeed join Red Lisa's waiting, not loving. I guess hatred or curious. Hold on. I don't know. Um, he, he hit Don, okay? He, he hit him. Yes. I like that because the 2C just got caught there. Yeah. Caught by the late air dash here, however. Things are looking a little spicy. All right. So bursting here is a pretty interesting choice because you 
negate the option for Relius to do a regen route and then get Ignis back on that confirmed there. But now you kind of... Now you go without one of Hazama's strongest power so, yeah, I'm not getting it. I'm not putting the blocks to you killed Ignis! So bold! 6 3 d is not gonna work, though. He... I don't know, he's no. fishing for those a little too much. He so... angles Donna's approach that really hasn't been, like, that high. And there is, just like with any other chain, like a dead zone there, there's just a point where that will not hit there too close to you yeah do you know how how um high up the dead zone goes up to uh it's it's like it, it might hit lower than some expect but like I, it really doesn't catch air dashes or anything like i'd say about the base like the base level of like a, a instant air dash it's mm. like you'll never hit like an air, like you'll never catch an air dash with it. Uh, it's like a little bit higher than that, I Oh, okay. And I'll be getting those guys. Oh, this is a counter screen. Oh, this is a counter screen. Look at the big concern. The only person in the corner is immediately spending the ODEA to put him back in the corner with some damage. Command throw coming out, too, now. Crazy here. We did so far. Air throw. Remember, guys, we are in our last game. Oh, he's getting opened up. He's getting opened up by the later dashes. It might be over. He summoned the doll. Now he's just going to stall you out. That's minus. You can chain. 5B counter hit. Oh I have God. no idea what Dawn was mashing here, but that is certainly the end of the round. Assuming this combo finishes, it's over. Yeah, he's going to make it dead. <laughs> he is super dead. Wow. You have to be way more careful about those situations. You really, like, when Hazama is in OD, I just don't want to bother. I'm like, yes, sir. Live out your day, sir. Yes, sir. Like, uh, that's fine. You zip around, you do what you want. I'll wait for right here. Yeah, and then his OD has and then I try to do it. Very fun time. Looking at this situation here, a couple of 5Bs. Barrier ends up pushing Fuzz away. Too close for that G2 and for Thon already swinging a button at that range. He tries to go for the... Wow! The second hit actually is the one that crosses up there. Yeah. I mean, I guess he was right, but like, without like the actual setup, or it just kind of worked out like that. Like, yeah, I kind of. Um, I think it kind of just worked out like that, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what's up. Air throw connects here. This is looking pretty good. Fuzz can do something relatively burst safe, but at the very least, put Dawn in the corner and potentially force out a burst. You can see he's keeping a burst safe with the Ender there. That was a no. That was a burst. That was 100% a burst. Now the onus is on Don to figure out this situation here. He's got plenty of resources to get it done, but we are looking real dangerous now, folks. Yeah. Oh, Counter Assault gets baited. Command Grab connects. That's just a good enough starter to get it done. The JC series should be able to finish it, and Fuzz punches his ticket into loser's finals. Yeah, I do like that use, I guess, of Potengine. Just like, you know, you had the meter uh, is either about to work and you were going to win or you just gotta you just spend all the butter to get like your turn going again when all you need is just like you know like one or two clean hits yeah you don't need much ultimately so spend the resource there to sort of get out rather than like for the next confirm or something was seemed uh pretty reasonable i agree so fuzz now Moving on into losers finals here to meet with Monarch. Um, Lambda. So I assume it's supposed to be Lambda Hogs. Um, presumably. No idea though. I don't always have a super good clue on what Monarch might want to pick. Let's see what we get coming up here. Looks like it is going to be straight Lambda. Okay, 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 okay. So let's see... You know, we're expecting, obviously, the Hazama from Fuzz. So, again, I'm not really too sure, like, how things play out over here. But we've seen Fuzz go at it with some of the 
the best to do it, and I'm just very curious to see how everything pans out. Yeah, it's like, I guess it depends how both players want to try to play. Mm -hmm. Because I think Lambda slightly outzones Hosma, but Hosma obviously can just pick like one right spot and get in with a chain. Uh, and like kind of what we're seeing um, when Monarch was fighting Ryukasun is the gravity well could heavily affect Hosma's approaches. Like he can't do any like extremely bad zip in because the gravity well will slow him right down. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So, the players, I guess, uh, active here. Okay. Alright, OD's getting popped, and that is a 6B, so that's going to be a solid punish for Monarch here. Swap sides as well. Oh, that was meant to be 6A. Unfortunate. Wow, that's 5B on the block. That's pretty good. Sheesh, okay, let's see what we got coming up here. Just a 2 and 4B. Again, really looking for those 63 Ds, but Monarch is not biting it. Oh, big 2 2 D reaction to the 6A. Yeah. Oh, Monarch there. And given the situation, I'm very surprised Monarch went for it. He has to still climb a pretty big mountain to get through it. It's not like an earlier burst where things are more even and you can swing momentum. And lacking a burst going into this next round is could be proved dire. Yeah, this burst though. Either a get out of jail free card or even just like a a good way to get out game for a leader confirm. Exactly. So let's see how this kind of pans out over here. DC ends up connecting right there. All those hits are low. You cannot fuzzy jump in the middle of those. Open running, talking up back with the overhead still. Good so far here. Fuzz quite low, but a low Fazama is a player with a huge OD in his back pocket ready to just kill. Him. And I do not trust the game of chance. Swap sides immediately, wants to maintain that position, but prorated the combo just a little too much. Could have gone for a simpler knockdown and then went for a chain. That was likely an OD into like a Micro Dash Retention or a um, uh, Serpent's Benediction. Yeah, it was a. Uh... Three. Maybe he just dropped the input. He didn't go counter it or anything. No, no, something just didn't come out. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's a, that's a very good point, actually. Oh my god. Walked up into this kill. Air to air combo. Well, it's not like this. Staying the course so far. Things are looking pretty decent here. But it gets clipped by the stance overhead. Alright, let's see another knockdown. Throw, command throw, nope. Overhead. First safe. Not gonna be able to kill off of this confirmed. Jeez, getting a dead zone is not ideal. Mark holding on to that burst for dear life. He spends it on OD because another hit was basically gonna kill, so had to do that and Fuzz, uh, just, uh, the passive backed off a bit, got right, right, ah, went right back in, got the hit he needed to close out that game. Oh, and we're going back to characters, like, is Monarch, might just be taking another second. Yeah, I think he might just be taking some notes and figuring out what's going on. But does, he does have two other characters in his back pocket here. That is true. Let's see what he, uh, let's see what he might pull out here. Okay. Oh, the lychee! Of all the characters, I was not expecting this one. Okay. I, I was gonna say, I feel like S or lychee uh, definitely have a much easier time <laughs> harassing Hazuma in neutral. Yeah, I have no idea how this will play out. 
Um, I don't know. For anyone that was at Frosty's, actually, um, could you guys let us know if Monarch was playing Light Chain during Casuals? This makes me curious. Either way, this one's going to be an interesting run here. Let's see what the Light Chain has to bring to the table. Well, I, that gets so weird. Doesn't quite get clean knockdown from it. Monarch getting the staff. Trying to get the floor here for some use of the plug. Actually, kind of sticking right on top of him. I don't even get too much momentum with the staff. Trying to use some of those stance follow ups. DP, in fact, comes out there. I don't know if that was intentional. Maybe Monarch expecting a. Uh, maybe Monarch expecting a chain in or something, but not quite any dice there. JA doesn't connect with Jamajin from Hosama does, however. That's going to be Monarch in the corner now. Staff available, DP is around. Command grab connects, however, and that's definitely going to finish Monarch for this round. Fuzz? Wow, very clean round with no Fuzz. Yeah, he's looking very, very good right now. Not too sure DP comes out here. QA. Alright. Cancels into that stance. But oh my goodness, the chain comes in before the staff even has any time to interact with Fuzz. This could be a cleaned up game right here. If Buzz gets this next hit, it is certainly death. Monarch finding a hit, able to combo off of the staff as well, and switch sides. Staff set has changed a bit, gets the launcher here. Nice pickup from the ground here. 6E, staff, 6E. All right, gonna get GP over here. All right, set the staff, kinda guess. Still plus here. Throws on the OG activation as well. Monarch should be able to finish the job right there. 6A will get it done. No super needed. Yeah, there we go. Just a monarch just needed one hit there to kind of snowball that round in his favor. And that's some of the power of like you know, could very well like a snowball off of a lot of those things. Like that. This as a win condition is nuts on top of such a crazy powerful neutral. 214B catches Fuzz on his incoming, in fact. Monarch nearly fully comboing off of it, but it is again intensely difficult to do that. Plus frames off of that normal here. Does the 6 e whiff. Rather the 6B whiff. Things are looking pretty decent here. Overhead. Oh my god. Alright, Ben, it's time to guess. Uh high low or cross up? Uh hi. I'm betting cross. Oh, oh my goodness. Your dash animation. Oh my god. Oh, I think that was that a 4 B? I think that was like the answer to that whiff there. Super's not quite gonna do enough damage, I think. Oh, that's oh, blocked. He's easily. That's it. No big punish there, just get the, uh, the staff hit there. Yeah, and I think Monarch is trying to like play staff and move in such a way that like Buzz is caught. Oh god, that air broke. No. And that's going to be the set. 204. No, this is Loser's final. Foolish me. This is this is Loser's final, so Monarch not out of it yet, but Fuzz up too. We can see we still got more Blaze to Blue, or however you may want to phrase it. We're going to see another character swap. Character. Taking time. I'm going to go through this whole selection. We're going to see the S. Uh, I have no idea, to be honest. I think the lychee was interesting. Uh, to kind of finish the thought there with the lychee. Oh my god, Ben, you're right. <laughs> um... <laughs> you know, it just... I mean, you know, you got, you got three... I'd say three solid characters, but two of them are kind of past that bar of solid, I'd say. Yeah. So. But, uh, yeah, I think what, um, to kind of finish the thought there, I think Monarch was trying to use this staff, uh, the 5D set where it spins, uh, where it spins around and hits twice. I think he was trying to route it so that, like, it would catch Fuzz on the incoming, but... Fuzz is the type of person to just blaze forward and force you to block, which is going to cause the staff to reset. So I think some of the air movement from Monarch is not working out super, super well. 
We'll see how things shift uh, as we move forward here on the S. I'm curious to see if there's going to be any similarities between some of the characters. Uh, DP is uh, certainly one of them here. Yeah. Is DP not connected to staff or maybe there? the other two. Yeah, right, right, going. He's the uh, overhead, or I think an overhead there with the DP. And he will get static confirmed. This is the, uh, so the burst. Probably an OD that's just subjected by 2A there. Three, you can from the counter and air fireball. 2A, 2A connects, crush trigger, and then I think the 5B traded right there. Yeah. I did work last time I was going to but not for it. Not for it. Ooh. Oh, none of that. Yeah, Monarch popping the burst a bit early. I think that's an okay choice. Um, S's OD is not super crazy, and you don't often see S players lean into it. It's like a good argument under the game. Under the game. Under the game. Under the game. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Like, you get to set a bunch of crests up around the place, but you really just see it at for those purposes. Another throw for Monarch in this situation. Alright, and it's time to guess. OG comes out, but that's still safe. You can air dash in with the JC. Really smart play from Monarch. The crest would have covered, like, pretty much every other option, while the air dash forward JC also allows you to both check for Hotenjin and still land it. So really cool stuff there. He blocks on the JC there. Ooh, caught trying to mash something out. And that's going to be the round for Fuzz. Yeah, it keep, keeps the combo uh, a little simpler than uh, some of the other stuff going for. Just, just doesn't matter. Kind of Up back, baby. There's your own shirt. Gets Borst, plus frames for free, blocks the overhead there, and mashes on the two on short seat. Oh, wow. Look at what he's going to do around the match. Okay, I like that. DAs between the uh, fireballs. Put Monarch in the corner where he will promptly DP. <laughs> I agree. Some may, some may say that's taking the easy way out, and you think I want one? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> JP! Good God, that button. Like, trust me, I took a look at those hitboxes the other day. Damn shame. <laughs> that button. That button's a, a silly one. <laughs> it's, it's something, right? It's juiced. Yoked up, as some may say. I don't know what other description for buff uh, people want to use. It. It's a, it's a little absurd. All right, Monarch actually committed to the jump beforehand. I wonder if he wanted to instant overhead JC and then saw the OD flash and was like, hmm, I guess I'll do something else here. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll hold off on that one. Yeah. Press covering the, the OD there, anyways, and allowed Monarch to get. Uh, full pickup into the kill there. Finally put himself on the board here. 2 1. Now locked into S2. Which, I mean, like, far from a bad character to be locked into to make the reverse 3 0, but. Yeah, I think of all the characters to do it, this one is pretty decent, I would say. So let's see what we got coming up over here. <laughs> Ooh. We've got a fuzz that could potentially get first 3-0 depending on what goes on here. The monarch who is on the back foot trying to punch their way into grand finals again from the loser side, having to I think everybody's surprised lost to Ryukas. No, no slander there to Ryukas in mind. Just, that's an upset. And that is okay. Ryukas can play well. Uh, JD Preston's out here. That is monarch. You know, we just saw him. Uh, oh my god, he is absolutely stringing up Fuzz like a puppy. Not even a rallyous player. But Fuzz? Honestly, I'm impressed though. Fuzz, like, not slowing down down a bit. Just still constantly just making sure you can get into the face of Monarch, keeping up the offensive pressure as much as he can. That's a purple throw! She ticked it a little too fast! 
I don't think Monarch realized it though. He probably just was like, oh man, I got hit. In fact, this command grab super in OD is especially messed up because of the extra life steal that Kazama gets because you're with him the entire time and the super takes forever. So it effectively does much more damage than usual. Yeah. And also, it's it, it life steal. Hakuna is getting a little bit of life back that whole time too. Yeah, it's kind of absurd in that sense. A oh, wow. couple of chains in, but a rising JB just barely getting it done here. Really tight timing, actually. I think he, yeah, he rose up, blocked the chain, and then JB would anyway. He's still connected. I like that Monarch is using these crests not even necessarily to, like, mix up, but really just wants to keep Fuzz contained for extra periods of time before, like, opting for a mix-up or a further plus frames. A couple of JD chains here. Now Fuzz is left out of luck. Gets the chains back, but the projectile ends up connecting. And this extended neutral, these extended neutral sequences are generally working out pretty fine. Both players are a lot more evenly matched in this scenario here. Jeez, 6B barely lifts, and JDD connects. And I feel like, again, I, I might stand corrected. This kind of is a way of showing, like, how S can net you a lot of neutral situations here. Because, like, when it comes to this and these situations and where Fuzz is unable to land a big clean hit, like, things get a lot more difficult. Projectiles with, but you still have time to JB? Oh my god, this is scary, man. <laughs> I, look, man, that's nuts. Though. I genuinely am shocked that there was enough time to do that. Corner carry, and, uh, my friends, it is time to guess. Right after these messages. 3C, yeah, try to check for his game. I'm back, go to the pick. He's out. Oh, oh my god. Since he ends up front of him. He's a bit of a stroke. He's got a stint in there. Oh, you want to kill this man, huh? Oh, Let's see is. what you got. You got a super now. Active full pops just in time to finish the job. That OD super does a ton of damage. Yeah, and it's one of those supers where they're... It's one of those OD supers where it's one hit and then an additional. So sometimes active flow pops after the first half of it, and then the second half does increased damage. Yeah. It's rather messed up. Also want to say shout outs to the Raiders from, uh, from Dawn. Hello, what's up? As you guys have seen, we are in a pretty crazy bracket right now for losers finals of Boston Blue Beat Burst Limit. This set is going the distance here. We are at the last game. Both players have been slugging it up for quite a while. They want a shot at the Yukasim in order to finish up this bracket and get their Dragon's Horde of over $200. And you can increase that pot by throwing in a little extra in that game. Why did that fuck Jay hit? That was, uh, that was a good one. Hit ball from the round. That was... Have you done that before? No. Also, I like Mammoth. Kind of often for the slow view, so he didn't get smoked by the uh, rising thing. Yeah, that was really good, and it also would have beaten the C follow up as well. Um, in general, you can, if you're like popping OD on 2 and 4B, which is not usually advised, but if you're stuck in that situation and you really think that they're going to go for a follow up, you can delay it a bit, and like that's useful, because otherwise Hazama will just invome and smoke before. Fuzz find himself on match point again. I feel like he's been here at least uh what would you like? Three times by now? Three times we we, dude, we finished explaining one interaction and the rest of the round played out. This is kind of but this is but this is insanity. Alright, and yeah, to follow up with what you were saying, Monarch and Fuzz have been here before and Monarch has found a way to keep this set like going on and on and on. So, it's gonna be a late night one. Yeah, he's already worked to tie it up, and now he's still working to keep it up alive. And he's gonna get the run back against the Yukasim. 60 there was so cool. That crest is really good at like catching a jump, and it will also catch people trying to raw throw because 60 is foot and throw involved. So it'll beat certain mash out attempts there. Really good drive to slip in there, especially when you're already showing some like, 2D or something like that that normally gets beaten by the 2 air. Oh my Jesus. god. Jesus. Speaking of buttons. That type of that actually is kicked off. And then auto correctly. Very good chunk of damage there. Monarch finally took the corner. Oh no. 
He's been looking for those 6 bees a while. I think that chain was specifically to catch that out. This is very dicey. This is next mix up here. Even Command Grab will probably start proccing Active Flow to a death. And remember, this is last game, last round. This determines who gets at least second place. ODs are popped, DPs are used, and my friend, there is an Active Flow available. It's about to be party time after this knockdown. Set. He's still mashed! Tried to look for the burst. That could very well have decided the rest of this set right here, right now. The drop on the 4D is so tragic. Caught the chain! Not really there for the pickup. He finds the follow-up afterwards. This isn't gonna deal enough damage. He has to go for another. He has to go for a mix. He has to go for a mix. He's Wait not gonna do enough no damage. He's not gonna pop active bro. Oh my what? god! That killed! That actually killed? I am so sorry for lying to you. I genuinely thought that prorated so much off of all of the A normals. I... I'm not gonna lie. I saw all the A's. I saw all the, like, 5 A's or whatever. I'm like, this won't kill either. Yeah, and then like, I saw I'm that... Like... I saw that health right before that super, and I'm like, no. It didn't, did it? Dude, I'm like most prorated, most prorated combo known to man. Monarch asked to go back to the committee. <laughs> no, and he just, he just died. He just died. Oh. What the f Jesus, man. Uh, talk about clutch to find your hit, drop, still find another hit. Pop OD just in time, and then do that does 13, 20 minimum? That super does 13, 20 minimum? That's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on a second. This is a game... Well, they nerfed a lot of min damage in this version. I just want to say... Hold on a second. Wait, 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 yeah, the numbers say that this does NOD 1000, 150x, yeah, minimum damage equals 30%, 1050, or 1320. I need you guys to realize that's about as much damage as, like, Blackhawk Stinger min damage. Hold on a second, let me pull this up real quick. Blackhawk Stinger min damage in Overdrive is 1480. That is comparable damage. That is only a difference of 160. Yes, I'm good at math. Do you know how high that is? Like, most min damage OD supers are not that much. That's absurd. <laughs> Every super does that much in OD, right? Rugia, I think you're wrong, but I, I, I hope you're wrong is really the, the true answer here. How much does Phoenix do? Phoenix minimum, oh, like Hibiki OD super. We know that does a lot of damage. That's 1260. That's less. That's a high damage OD super. That's less than that. Uh, Rage Aggressor damage got nerfed, so we're not even going to talk about that one. Um, What's a super that the... Let's maybe... Devoured by Dark. I'm just super curious now. I'm so sorry, guys. Like, I just need to do research. The best this is... This is, get, this is nuts. The, the, this is quite nuts. Like, I need it on... Like, that's high damage. That's a lot of damage, dude. OD Claws does 1320. OD Claws is 1328? Jesus Christ. That is crazy, dude. All right, hold on. Finish up these codes. We're in Grand Finals. It's Monarch versus Reapison. Monarch went... I was too busy looking up. I didn't even see what character he picked. Picked Lambda after all that? Jesus Christ. Anyway. Yo, uh, I'm just gonna, I was just gonna throw in there that uh, I remember how I'm, I'm the boomer back in the day. I'm the yep. one devoured by darkness in 15 years. I remember when the OD Rage Oppressor by bullet did damage. I'm just gonna say that. Anyway. Oh, you went new 13! What? Hold on. I saw Luminous and I was like, wait a minute, something's wrong. <laughs> That's not a Lambda button. That's not a Lambda. <laughs> She didn't have the aura anyways. Oh god, okay. Um yeah, this is I have no idea what's going on here. I'm gonna I, I don't either. I, don't... I I guess I wouldn't be surprised. I just didn't know that Monarch had a 13. He does have a new 13. I lost to it a lot on this. 
<laughs> I'm just right Oh my god, that caught the back dash. Good heavens. RC, some of the drives there. Gear sequence mostly connects. Crosses under with the low. Things are looking pretty decent. You can set the luminous up now and then perhaps uh, make a person guess by uh, going for throw or something. If Yanagi does come out that, Yanagi is like minus seven, so you can just wait for it. You can wait to block that and just punish accordingly. If I remember correctly, I know that at least on IB, you can actually punish it. Um, okay, moving into this next round here so far. Alright, backs off according to you. Gravity Well is doing its job, catches Rufus in the middle of the IAD well before he has the chance of Eevee coming out with a normal here. Oh my god, another block Yanagi. Looking decent. Oh, big drop! We're fine, we're yep. so fine. We're back and ben, we're Ben, we're fine, we're fine, dude. We're fine. Ben, we're fine. We're fine. we're fine, we're fine, 6-8. Yep, okay, this is the character we're playing. Okay, that's fine, 800 damage, uh, you know, 876, you know what I'm saying? That's fine, that's nothing. Oh, you have the, one of the lowest health in the game, yeah. We're fine, we're fine, we're okay. Yeah, you know, that's, that's like, uh, half as much, but more than that. You know what I'm saying, quick maths anyway. That's, that's like, barely half of the actual Oh, my good heavens! Oh, you're dead. Okay, that's one of the this one, a bit. <laughs> a bit. Yeah, a little less fine. Oh, but now we're totally fine. And it's the danger. Watch him do Wave Super, I swear to God. Rugus loves popping that. He's gonna do Wave Super. You know what I mean? No, he wants it, right? Okay, and now I'm wrong again. I lied as easily as I breathe. Okay, I called it! Wrong timing! Okay, he loves doing that. He loves doing that. It doesn't always work, but I do. He loves doing Summer's Advance. Too far ahead. Yeah, my brain, you know, I'm like an oracle, you know, Apollo gifting the gift of prophecy to random Twitter users. I'm like that, but on commentary. Rebel three. Action. Okay, we're continuing on. We're just playing. Haha, uh -huh. having a zone. I don't know why I said that. I feel like I'm going insane. <laughs> or deconnect. Oh, you still have to block more. Rick is a no! The Luminous! Oh, that's The well? Okay. Kind of good town. Zooming in? Okay, you got it. I think you know you're freaking You guys are really got it. Friggin' try, dude. Okay, this is fine, though. We get our knockdown, and we just... We're just gonna interact. We're gonna continue to interact in the game. That's all we're... I don't know what that... That's all we're... Yeah, that's not here. It does a lot of damage, don't get it twisted, but oh. you reward you, you got a first there, because otherwise maybe some pops OD and something very silly happens. No, it is Monarch's death. That's the silly thing. RC this? Oh my god, RC the wheel, RC the wheel. Oh, RC 4D! Ah, I got hit! Yeah, the double overhead. Everyone gets hit. No one's blocked that. It's literally unblockable. Oh my god. We only got one game. Okay, we are, this is nuts. I need to get water after this game. Okay. Hold on a moment here, guys. This is gonna be another long one. Unless Rigason gets, like, hits Monarch like three times, in which case it's a short one. <laughs> oh my god, this is Jacko color, that's very sweet. Guys, <laughs> 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 really I'm paying attention, okay. <laughs> you got everything. I am locked. Oh my god, Mark. Every time you throw out a sword, I get tense. I'm so anxious. Ah, look! Why would you TK away from this face? That's cool. It works. Now you have to hit him like two times to do just enough damage. Oh, you better leave. <laughs> oh, Oh, you didn't take the throw. Oh, that's rough, but if you are absolutamente finished. <laughs> His brother is turning out. Ow. Alright, now we're back to neutral. Everything's fine. Oh my god. All of these interactions have done more damage than most new DMDs. And I want you to understand that. 
You can do that, Moji. That's super cool. Wow. All right, pop EA now and give yourself active. Or don't. That's fine, too. You're the top player. Okay, the wheel is set, but it's off screen, so it's not going to do much. All right, pops the 2 and 4A, wants plus frames. 6B is connecting. Wow. All right, right. No, sorry. That was 5. 6B is going to extend the way. I don't know. Anyway, Gravity Well is set up once again, really just trying to lock down the da uh, the options. Luminous is really good here because you get to threaten strikes against certain parries, so you can still go with like an overhead to beat certain 2Ds, as well as throw, of course. Great OD from uh, Rikusum, however, not there for the punish. Crouching hit, so able to confirm into all of this, sending Rikusum away. The Yuki Kaze is not going to get much done, however, because, again, uh, New 13 is not like throwing out a strike. So she will likely have enough time to super jump away uh, because she gets to she's picking whether or not she's doing the drive follow up so uh, she has less recovery than lambda would be is fully committed into both like drive swords uh, interesting little bit of nuance to, to think about oh 6a connects here we'll bring him back in from war uh -huh. Luminous, you'll throw stand ticker! The shimmy, but to no reward. Oh, oh man, Lisa, you've been attacked. You've been struck. You've been had! You're going to die! You're not going to die. You're fine. You're fine. Yo! Okay, counter. He's off. The neutral is being set. Oh, oh no. my god, if you don't... Oh, I get that you're really patient about your bursting, but Jesus Christ, Monarch! Alright, now set the Luminous. Set the Luminous. We're good! We're chilling! Three star! He's not gonna TK Super. What? God damn! Yo. Oh, just take his burst. Just take his burst. Just take... Yes, 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 yes! Okay, now pop OD. Pop OD. Oh! Good oh. job, Ryukazam! <laughs> Yes! Oh my god. Rikusin is just throwing Yanagi out as he should, and Monarch just dies for it. Oh my god. That Yuki, that uh that uh that thing was good. Oh, good Yanagi. Wow. Dude, I'm going insane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going crazy. I'm losing my freaking mind. We are <laughs> Wait, we might be here for a while. He's committed to the new 13 too. God. Okay. All right. We're gonna do this together. Together. Why did the JD lose its? Oh my God. You really got the JD recovery. That's genuinely shocking. Oh my God. Just leave. Just leave. Just leave. Just leave. If he does not IB a Yanagi, I swear to God. If Ryukasen doesn't. Oh. Oh. Ryukasen. Ooh, just hit 2D. Just hit just hit 5D on the enemies. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Plus frames? Yeah! Don't jump! You don't need to jump! He's weak, what are you doing? You wanna be in the- well, You're plus! It's 2 and 4A, it's plus 1! Oh, Smash 2A you? after! Oh my oh, god. Oh, you suck! That's just that range you got rewarded, you son of a gun! He ate him, he ate him right now. Yes, yeah. okay. Great. He got, he got hello. Okay, Ooh. now walk up and throw him. Walk up and throw him, I swear to god, it'll work. Why did you do that? No, that was wrong. I can say that's wrong because I'm the commentator. And it happened. Four C. <gasps> wow. Oh my good heavens. To be spaced such that that will whiff and you can punish it accordingly. Wheel comes in. It's time to guess. Oh my god. Nice block. Oh, you got anti air you dweeb. Legacy. Like, you like this. Like this. Burst. I disagree with that burst simply that because burst. that burst was not. So the reason why I think that burst was not as viable is because one of the big problems that Lucas has had, like, is that it takes a lot of neutral interactions for him to actually get in versus Mark. And though he is successful eventually, and that is testament to like how he's moving and playing around, for those last hit situations, Monarch gets to play much more patiently, and you blow such an advantageous resource for you in this matchup where the raw kill pressure from an overdrive can net you a kill.
Like, obviously, the benefit is that you can still you close out, you go into the next round. You don't necessarily need OD to, like, play the game versus U13 as Hawkman, right? Uh, but again, you lose out on a lot of pressure and you give a lot more freedom in the, like, kind of momentum. I think it's 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 important to kind of note that in the different ways in which it manifests. DA comes out here. Excuse me. Monarch cleans up the third game of the set here. Monarch is, excuse me, now up 2-1 versus Reedusim. Again, from the loser's side. Yeah, looking for Arisa after, you know, switching to his fourth character of the tournament. Yeah, I this is nuts, dude. <laughs> Um, and I, I hope I scream. I hope you guys understand that me backseating is me just being like, oh my god, please do this, please do this, please do this. It's not like, obviously these guys are in the bracket. They're very, they're like good players. So like, you know, this is this is me being very loose and, and, and loose with it, and just being anxious. Like I would be saying this as a spectator. That's just how I expect it. I'm just really excited. This is like nuts. Oh my god, Brandash! Okay, we're fine. Now we're fine. Now you're fine. Now you set up the well. And do this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the zoning. We're zoning. Hey, we're chilling. You play Rachel, right? You know, you're zoning. Yeah. Zoning. You know this. Like. Why did Super Clash? You don't put my whole to crash. The difference is I do more than 1700 damage. <laughs> yeah, you do that with one poison cloud. <laughs> <laughs> you set up the poison, you look at someone and be like, hey there. And I just feel like the current angle here. And I just look at you like. <laughs> Oh my god. I wonder what we have some input there. I'm actually not sure what uh what got caught out there. Because I heard the flash of a special. Well, this don't matter too much now. Level two. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he just did JTC. I wonder what that was. I think maybe that was catching a forward or something there from Monarch. I'm not too sure. Uh, it doesn't work out in that scenario. It gets picked by the wheel, in fact. Maybe it was uh, inputting his IAD and he recognized the animation from Monarch here. Okay, we're fine. We're just going to set up the wheel. Probably gravity. Yep, there it is. Slow down the air dash approaches there. Uh, and this is a bit more difficult. I think Ryukasun can play this a little more patiently. Uh, he can play the resource game, and uh, I don't think he needs to necessarily even threaten Wave Super, though he, I, he can on wheel. I don't know what the, the speed of those are. That was a really slick IAD, however. Oh, no world, but got in a little bit. Got yeah. tagged, though. Gonna... RC. Yeah, he wanted to check for the burst. Okay, you jump out of there, and we're back to neutral. That's the problem with Yukikaze in those situations. Um, You're not really achieving much. Um, You have to... You would have to, like, Yukikaze by the time New 13 maybe special cancels into wheel. And even then, you'd have to be incredibly quick about it. Um, I think the Yuki Kaze would work, however, in more niche situations where maybe Monarch like air dashes back or commits to command dash back into a drive in which that will catch, in which uh, Lambda has too much time. She has to land and then jump up and will get caught by the unblockable hits of Yuki Kaze. Uh, but I think the positioning does not end up changing much. Uh, I think that Ryuka Sim has had great success by playing around Yanagi at the mid range, especially when he has gotten past a gravity well. So I think if he sticks to cutting a couple of projectiles in earlier in the round sequences, and then using those to gain meter, and then just showing a few more like different jump patterns, he'll have better success. Uh, generally against New 13 zoning, and I'm not super great in this matchup, I'll, I'll preface that with this. Uh, you want to mix in different actions such as IEDs and super jumps, as well as your regular dash, in order to make more of news drives with. You know, 2D is not going to cover the same angles that 6D will cover, for example. So you really want to show this different movement to make Monarch kind of guess more on these swords. Because if Monarch gets comfortable with his zoning, you are going to be sitting there for a very, very long time trying to get in, much to your own chagrin. Uh, another thing that is pretty difficult for you to see to deal with is the way that Monarch shifts out of certain ranges of air normals such as the super jumps as well as the IEDs. He's doing a fantastic job doing things like that where the gravity well is set, which gives him extra time to dash in with a super and actually anti the top. Uh, this reward on this hit is pretty solid. 3k is pretty good for new 13 standards, I would say. And you can see that situation there with the 60 whiffs. That would have caught an IED, um, but when you're just kind of staying on the ground, you know, it's not going to work out as well. It's really important for like Hakuman to show his different options. Even though, you know, his, he has a step down. It's kind of limited. Uh, Rikusen manages to get in. Let's see how he kind of plays out the sequence. Reese for Monarchs, surprise. 
that's, yeah, and that's another 60 there. And you can see, based on the 5 A's, like, hold on a second, he's gonna back off here, we're back to zoning. Let's see if the round ends shortly. Yeah, there's the Yanagi there, like, it's really important to know, like, how you push for positioning overall and play the long game. Because if you try to play the short game, it's not going to work out as well. I think these double jumps are also problematic for Ryukisim because they leave him in a much more ideal range for Monarch to 6D. Even if Ryukisim cuts the projectile, he doesn't gain any significant positional advantage. If it gives him the meter to uh, Yanagi, perhaps that is more important, especially if he's still at the mid-range. But taking the time to corner Monarch here is very important. Uh, and then you can kind of play the game of trying to navigate around Man Dash. You know, at some point, Monarch has to get past the emphasis to get back to mid speed, go back to zone. Uh, and it's really, really important to kind of like show a willingness to do other stuff. Uh, I'm curious to see if Ryukusim would also benefit from just walking forward and doing drive into like 2 and 4A. Uh, I think that also might be an interesting approach option from Ryukusim. We saw the drive honestly more frequently. Uh, against Lambda, but we've only seen Yanagi as far as drive usage here. Like, the 6 2 3 AA is not going to work out, especially under Gravity Well, but maybe buffered under a drive canceling that might might be a little better. It's kind of tough to tell. You. Um, but I think right now this match has been really emblematic of the fact that, like, yes, Hockeyman has a tool to deal with zoners, but there is no way in hell that you should consider that to be the centralizing way that uh, he works on. As a zoner, you can still effectively use your game plan against Hockey. Monarch is, is frankly putting on an extremely good demonstration. <clears throat> okay, back to shit posting. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was just letting you rock. You were, you, you were carrying quite hard there. I was like, all right. I'm going to go drink some water. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Oh, what are we on the reset? Was that two or one? That was one. Okay. The wheel okay. of fate is turning. Rebel one. Action. Okay. Fall button is a more kind of getting the green out your life. And uh, really adjusting the route. You some kind of double match as well. You can have this space here. And then out the zone, <clears throat> not going to interact with the gravity field, slowing down movement, uh, any approach you want to do. Ooh, oh, that's a delay that's... on the counter. That was gravity. This is like almost real damage to me. Am I going to lie? Oh, yes! It's party time. This is a dead new 13. Kill him. All right, now it's super. Oh. Oh, and I guess he loses this. Okay. Yeah, actually, he might be a... <gasps> what? It's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's... It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I think it's okay. This is really hard. This is... This is... If I'm Ryukasim, and I'm still playing calm after... If Ryukasim still plays calm after this, he's done. Like, like I need you to... I need, I need you all to understand that. Because I would... It's... <laughs> My opponent picks a weaker character, in 13, and I'm getting, I'm getting hit. I'm not getting cooked, but like, this is tough. There's a lot of ego that comes in sets like these and that I, I think is difficult to overcome, especially when you're in the grand finals and you're super worried about losing the set here. So I'm very curious as to what the mental for you this one is like, and I have no freaking clue what is in Monarch's head right now. <laughs> I was just saying, do you think Monarch picked new on like a, like a, just a why not? Or do you think there was some like, deeper, deeper meaning behind it? Or do you think this um, matchup is actually like, kind of like, new favored? Or, like, I, I will never say this matchup is new 13 favored. I, the only matchups I, I will, the only matchup I will say is new 13 favored is the and that is like, this is not new 13 favorite. This is like, this would be like at most even, and even then that's pushing it. I need y'all to understand that Monarch is also frankly just that good. Um, I, I, 
I, I, I agree with Mark. It's just that good. I'm just surprised that this was the pick he went with, or stick with, and it's like kind of about Successful. to run it back with. Yeah. yeah. So I also want to point out here uh, one thing real quick, because we saw Rigason going to Danger State, and this is just a quick thing. Oh, he's going to Talcock. It's, it's, uh, all right. Uh, it's really important. This is, this is our grand final set, by the way. I need you to understand that this is to win over $200. This is to make it farther, to potentially make it to our regional for free. This is this is what is happening. I need you all to know, friends, that like we we have fun around here and we're playing crazy characters. We had a top eight at Frosty Faustings that had like six different characters with like no Lychee or easy not. So like we're just doing we're doing it. Dude. And I think if you want to change it up, like we saw Monarch go from Landed to U13, screw it. This is going to be tough for Rebus. Um, the main problem that Tao Kaka is going to deal with is that you know, this is a really fast character. She she can navigate around the screen quickly. Um, the problem her hurt boxes. She's literally flinging herself at you. That crawl was really cool. Um, uh, so there is a lot of danger in literally everything that Rikusen does. Uh, we've seen him play Tao Kaka in a couple of our brackets before, so it's not like he's bad. Look at that cross. Look at that left right. I got him six times there, and he only did it twice. Um, uh, but again, this is this is gonna get a little crazy. So I need y'all to I need y'all to stick with me. Okay. Going for the ender here. Now, what do you do when a gravity well is on you? Off screen 40 is messed up, man. Yeah, uh, so just to point out, Tau Crawl is like extremely effective across multiple matchups as a way of getting under almost anything. It is by and large the best low profile in the game, even better than Izanami 2B for that. Um, it is just like, whoa, golly, Jesus, Ryukusen, that is, I, I'm pretty sure that's really hard to do. Tau Kaka, like, I need to understand, I need to explain, Tau Kaka is actually like extremely executionally difficult. Um, I remember I was talking to Cryo, the probably are the best like cry, uh, like Taukaka player in the states, uh, and he ran me through a simple B and B to like eight Kokonoe Super Mall, and I was like, this hurts. <laughs> this, this is really hard. All right, Rikusen's making good work of this right now in the situation. Uh, ben, I think it's time to I think a burst is gonna happen in like two seconds. Yeah, you mean right here? I don't know why, but I feel it. Ooh, two, 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 three, six, B, 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 B. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's death. Okay, great. Oh wait, well, the the Tau counter. Level three. <laughs> I'm going insane. Oh. All right, we're fine. Gravity Wall is up, but wow. Alcaca, for Tao, it's pretty annoying, but it's really a matter of her having the better, like, grounded dash options and beating 5B, but Monarch's been relying on 40 a ton of these sets so far, and that interaction is another example of why Tao Drive is a dangerous, dangerous time. This character's annoying to swap, but by God, they gave her the hurt boxes to just beat the crap out of her if you got him the hurt box there. Solid OD from there, forced to use the EA because of the follow-up. Let's see what we get. Tries to swap sides here. Swap sides once more. Last interactions are coming up here slowly but surely. Gravity well into the RC. No active flow here, but that might not even be necessary here. Crush trigger to add the extra damage. The 5A super does not connect. RC available for you because it goes in for the low. It's time to go to the corner, friends. 6B connects. A lot of drive cancels. Those are so fast. Bad! Oops. <laughs> the jello sweeps away. Oh. That's how it ends. The off screen 4D. This was how the party got started. This is how the party ends. Ryukism having defeated Monarch in Winner's Finals. Falls 3-1 to the new 13. And then falls 3-0 in the follow-up set. Once more to the new 13. Monarch does not care for any single character. No tier list. No nothing. He will indeed get the job done no matter what. This man, once more, I must remind y'all, has no counters. Despite playing against Aquaman. Jesus. Monarch proving he can still win online brackets too. Netplay does not weigh him down. Yeah, that was that was crazy.
Um, I want to say shout outs to all the players that played. Um, those were really, really fun sets to watch all throughout. And they got only more insane over time. Uh, Rikusim, really good job getting that upset on Mark in Winners Finals. That was impressive play. I think the I think the way that you were playing that I saw on stream was really cool, and I want to like highlight that um, genuinely. So you can, I mean, it's kind of tough to take that loss, but I think that you could hang your head high still. Also, you got a bunch of money stuff. So um, but okay, uh, it's getting really late, so I'm gonna run y'all through the last things going on. First things first. Uh, Please, by all means, uh, put in the last two codes. We're almost done here. We can give the players even more money. All of, you know, like 50 cents. It's pretty good. Um, that stuff matters, especially when we're doing laundry. Um, so just to note that. And our last things that we have going on here. Tomorrow, we have our weekly for Plus R. It is going to be just as insane as this, if not even more. That is at 8 p.m. And then the next day afterwards, for we have our bracket for Uni System Celeste, and that is going to be uh, on the next day at 8 p.m. We will let you guys know if the PC port looks good or if we'll be on console. I, I forget if we've tweeted any decisions out on there, just to let you guys know if you're you know cautious about it. Understandable. Um, this will all be streamed on twitch.tv slash Boston Bluebeat. You can also catch us on Twitter at Boston Bluebeat. You can catch us on YouTube at Boston Bluebeat. We keep our socials pretty consistent here. Um, additionally, we have this weekend our monthly going on on February 3rd. This will feature a lot of games like Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, uh, Undernight, which is going to be big. I want to remind y'all that we have people like Red Blade, Fox of, and Pinku that are in our region. It will be a bloodbath. Um, Grand Blue versus Rising, Melty Blood Type Lumina, King of Fighters 15, Rev 2, and Sailor Moon S. Yes, we always got Sailor Moon. We're, we're pretty nutty over here. Um, that's about everything I wanted to run you guys through. Ben, do you have anything to promote, chill, or otherwise shitpost about? Um, no, I think you hit all the beats. Uh, I will be, you will see me at the monthly uh, commentating, actually, again, <laughs> at the desk, so. Dope. Uh, I'll, I'll look for a raid real quick. I'll see if there's anything interesting to raid. Give me, give me, give me a little bit. We'll, we'll look for, we'll look for a goofy raid. Give me a quick second here. Oh, uh, we can throw it on to, you know, we'll throw it on to Lid. We'll throw it on to a Mega Lid. Uh, Lid is cool. Yeah, Lid's on. Yeah, we can throw it on to Lid. He's cool. Yeah, Omega Lid. Yeah, he'll be like, oh my god, guys, thank you so much. I love Lid too. Lid's fun. You'll, you'll probably see it. You'll be seeing him on comms for Undernight. He's really cool. Genuinely. Love it. Oh, yeah, commentator. Yeah, he's commentating for us. Okay. Uh, let me go back to the stream here because I clicked away. Oh, oopsies. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, bye guys. Uh, take it easy, please. Peace.